435-3300 for more information. Channel 5, KSTP-TV, St. Paul, Minneapolis. Tonight's regularly scheduled ABC programming will not be seen so that we may bring you the following eyewitness sports presentation. We came up here with one thing in mind to win it. Uh, we've had a relatively good year, but uh, it certainly wouldn't be you know, totally gratifying unless we did win it. The Gophers go for a college hockey national championship, and Coach Brad Buto claims they can win it all. Five times in the last eight years, Minnesota teams have qualified for this NCAA championship, winning titles in 74, 76, and again in 1979. Tonight, they go for a national title number four. Live from the Duluth Arena, the NCAA College Hockey Championships, Minnesota and Michigan Tech, meeting in the opening round of the semifinals. Hello again, everybody. I'm Rob Lear, reporting from the twin port city of Duluth, where tonight Minnesota and Michigan Tech will do battle with tonight's winner moving on to Saturday night's championship. The NCAA Hockey Championships, live from the Duluth Arena. The Minnesota Gophers versus the Huskies of Michigan Tech. Now for all of tonight's exciting action, here is Joe Boyle. Fans are ready. They've been playing, it seems, forever. And I'll be down in the penalty box area to give you some of the color commentary from my side during the game. Joe? All right, Tom. For the first time in the history of the NCAA tournament, there is no Eastern team represented. All four teams are for the West, and we'll get into that more as we progress with our broadcast. Bill Neal, the immovable force and the uh, irresistible object is just about what we have with Michigan Tech and Minnesota. I wish I would have said that. <laughs> you <great>. couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> Minnesota, two very fine teams, as you mentioned, Joe. Minnesota, 32 and 11. The key to their game is their offense. They want to play the passing, skating game. I think on the, the negative side for Minnesota, their goaltending and defense was a bit of a question mark early in the season. Come on strong down the stretch. Michigan Tech, 28-13 and 1 on the season. Very balanced team, of course, very physical team as all John McGinnis teams are. The big key for uh, Michigan Tech is to stay out of the penalty box. Minnesota operating about 36% on the power play. They're devastating on the power play. Tech needs to stay out of the penalty box. Okay, very quickly, Bill. The rink, uh, it's an unknown quantity, and uh, for Minnesota, it could be a problem. Well, it gives guys like us something to talk about. 20 feet shorter than the rink at uh, Williams Arena in Minneapolis, so this could cause problems for Minnesota. It appears that it would play into the hand of Michigan Tech with their physical game, but uh, anything can happen in this kind of a tournament, and uh, I think it's execution and goaltending that'll be the key. Well, only time will tell. We'll find out. And Tom Mees will be back with a closer look at the teams and some of the players involved when we return to the Duluth Arena for the beginning of Game 1 of the 1981 NCAA Division I Ice Hockey Championship. A new automotive standard has been set in Burnsville. The distinctive Fletcher Buick Fiat. Come out this weekend, look over the fine lines of the Buick Century. Elegant styling, reasonable price, plus a $500 rebate. Or receive up to $1,000 from Fiat on a car with looks that make heads turn. Fletcher Buick Fiat, exit Crystal Lake Road on I-35, just south of the Burnsville Center. We'll show you the future and a sharp pencil. Get up. I entertain a lot of very important people. So I want to make a good impression without a lot of cleaning up. Petra herself, great testing Schmidt. In Big Mouth, barrel bottles. Schmidt Big Mouth is in a glass by itself. Kettle? Stupid. Kettle? Pop. A Big Mouth tonight. A Schmidt Big Mouth. Tune into TCF and take your choice of quality sound equipment. Free or at low cost with a qualifying savings deposit at Twin City Federal. Sound equipment for the family room, a summer cottage, the beach or boat, a handsome selection of radios, recorders, mini TV sets, beautiful stereo systems too, even clock radios to wake you up. Tune into a TCF savings account and tune into fine sound equipment. Nothing like little brothers. 
Obviously, when a hockey team makes it this far to the Final Four of NCAA Division I, they have several quality hockey players, but we here at ESPN have picked out three players we'd like you folks around the nation to watch tonight. First of all, for the Minnesota Golden Gophers, their left winger, Captain Steve Olsen, the third leading scorer in Minnesota Golden Gopher hockey history, 200 points all told on his career, and Olsen was the WCHA player, rather scoring champion this past season. An interesting story there. He turned down a partial scholarship four years ago at Wisconsin so he could become a walk-on and played his home University of Minnesota. Then there's the team of Neil and Aaron Broughton. Neil Broughton gets all the publicity from playing on the Olympic team last year, but his brother Aaron, what a find he is for Brad Buto. A sophomore, he had 25 power play goals this year for the Gophers. Nine goals during the season were game winners. Watch Aaron Broughton, number 10, on the power play. The last line of defense for Brad Buto's Minnesota Golden Gophers will tonight be Paul Butters. He's one of a tandem of sophomore goaltenders of Butters and Jimmy Chetland. Now, Paul Butters will start against Michigan Tech. There you see his goal against average of 3.61 in 19 games, slightly better than the team goals against average of 3.89. His counterpart for Michigan Tech University is an interesting story because he's one of the few seniors in this tournament. Frank Creever had 20 wins this year, an amazing goals against average of 3.11. He's the stopper, and he's also undefeated in playoff competition with a record of 6-0. Another fellow to look out for for Michigan Tech is Tim Waters, a defenseman wearing number five. He was a member of the Canadian Olympic team a little bit more than a year ago. He is a defenseman, but keep in mind he can score. He already has 10 points so far in playoff competition. Another fellow to watch out for for the Michigan Tech Huskies is Rick Bame. He's from the little town of Allen, Saskatchewan. Bame is one of the most valuable players on this Husky team for head coach John McGinnis, and he can score too. He's a fast skater. He's been the leading scorer the last three seasons for the Michigan Michigan Tech Huskies. So there you have a capsule look at what we believe to be the key players tonight for Minnesota and Michigan Tech. The arena here in Duluth is filling up fast. The excitement is building and we'll be right back with more hockey action live from the Duluth Arena in Duluth, Minnesota on ESPN in just a moment. Last spring, localized weather disasters cost certain soybean growers thousands of dollars. It didn't rain in time to make a lot of rain-activated herbicides work. These growers were out the price of the herbicides and some got lower yields to boot. And that's a shame because their neighbors who use Treflan got fine weed control. Treflan works even without timely rain. Can you really afford a failure? Treflan from Alanco. Isn't it time you tried the distinctive old world taste of special export? Only Special Export uses sparkling pure virgin spring water, carefully selected barley, choice brewing rice, and for that European taste, imported spalt and Hallertau hops. Special Export is fully croissant, naturally carbonated, double brewed, the old world way. Try it and you'll agree. You can travel the world over and never find a better beer. Back here at the Duluth Arena in Duluth, Minnesota, Joe Boyle along with Bill Neal and Tom Mees. We are just about ready to get underway with our game between Michigan Tech and the University of Minnesota. Let's take a closer look at some of the players that will be involved in this game. You've already met a few, but we'd like to have you meet the coaches and their players now. And first of all, from the University of Minnesota, let's talk to Coach Brad Buto and have him talk to his or tell you a little bit about his players for us. Good evening. My name is Brad Buto. I'm the head hockey coach at the University of Minnesota, the Golden Gophers from Minnesota. We're looking forward to a very exciting, very fast-paced hockey game with Michigan Tech tonight. I would like to introduce some of our young men that are part of our team that have been very pivotal in our success this year. First young man is David Jensen, a sophomore defenseman from Armstrong High School in Minneapolis. Uh, has done an excellent job for us, was selected the last two years to the World Junior Team and was voted the most valuable player in the World Junior Team last year. Next young man is Michael Kanoki, our co-captain on our team, has been a great hockey player for us. Again, very steady. He's out of Minneapolis Roosevelt in Minneapolis, and he will be you know, our starting defenseman tomorrow night, a senior from Minneapolis Roosevelt. Kevin Hartzell is the next young man uh, of St. Paul, Minnesota, uh, attended Washington High School in St. Paul. A junior right wing, you know, playing with the Minnesota Gophers. He is on our top line, has played two years of junior hockey, and has been with us for three years. Neil Broughton is a sophomore center iceman on our team, uh, is recovering from an 
elbow injury and will be able to play tonight. That we're very fortunate and very pleased about that. He was an All-American for us this year as a center iceman. Played on the U.S. Olympic team last year in a very exciting gold medal winning. It was also voted to, as the most prestigious uh, award, the Hobie Baker Award, as a top collegiate hockey player in the United States this year. Steve Alseth is our other co-captain. I was St. Paul out of Kellogg High School, uh, a senior, left wing. Steve has been a four-year regular for us, was our rookie of the year three years ago, was also an All-American this year, and has been a, a key, very pivotal, played a very pivotal part in our success this year. Some of the Golden Gophers at the University of Minnesota, 32-11-0 and 0 on the year, the number one rated team in the country. Well, they'll be taking on the Huskies of Michigan Tech University. We had the chance to line some of the Huskies up and have Coach John McInnes introduce them for us. John? I'm John McInnes, uh, coach of the Michigan Tech Huskies, and we're looking forward to the game tonight with Minnesota. We have a great rivalry going, and we're looking forward to an excellent contest. At this time, I'd like to introduce my players. Uh, first coming up here is our left winger, our starting left winger, Al Mikulich. An excellent skater, drives well off the wing, good all-around hockey player, and has scored very well recently for us. Uh, next young man is uh, Jeff Wiley, our right winger on our first line. He's an excellent skater, a good checker, and a good hitter. He's recently coming in to, to his own and scoring some goals for us. Next young man is Bill Terry, a freshman, uh, recently moved into center, has probably been one of our keys in our recent winning streak, and he's been an excellent uh, all-around hockey player for us, a great playmaker, great shot. Next young man is Tony Stiles, a uh, junior defenseman, is the big hitter on our hockey team, moves the puck very well, and is very strong defensively. Uh, our last but not least uh, is our captain, Tim Waters, uh, recently named All-American. Tim is an all-round defenseman, moves the puck very well, is our number two scorer, and is an excellent defensive defenseman. Well, Joe Boyle, Bill Neal, Tom Mee standing by, just about ready to get underway with the start of our clash between the University of Minnesota and the Michigan Tech Huskies. Minnesota and Michigan Tech, two of the four teams involved in the 1981 NCAA Division I playoffs, the other two being the University of Wisconsin and Northern Michigan University. All four teams from the West as the NCAA this year instituted an eight-team play down, pitting the top four teams in the East against the top four teams in the West. And the Western teams emerge victorious. We'll talk a little bit more about that a little later on in our game. The Huskies of Michigan Tech, 28-13 and one on the year under the direction of John McInnes. Uh, they have been just phenomenal over the years. McInnes, 531 victories, 280 defeats, and 36 ties in his coaching career at Michigan Tech. Just an outstanding record, winning as college hockey coach in the United States. Joe, it's interesting going into this season, before the start of the season, Coach John McGinnis had more wins than the other three coaches combined. <laughs> he, had, uh, he had 503 wins coming into the season. Uh, Brad uh, Buto, Bob Johnson, and uh, Rick Comley had 481 between the three of them. Quite a record for John McGinnis over a quarter of a century. Bill, as a former coach, I, I think you have to look at the University of Minnesota. The defending champion is gone. North Dakota University out of the tournament this year. The University of Minnesota has got to have the most pressure on them. They are the number one rated team in the country coming in here. They have been number one rated through the great majority of the season. That in itself puts pressure on them along with the pressure of appearing in this type of tournament. Well, it certainly does, but I think, Joe, they have been under that pressure for quite some time since about halfway through the season. They took over the number one slot and really have not been unseated, and uh, so it becomes a factor, but uh, they'll be there. Ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem, we invite you to join the fans here in the Duluth Arena and join along with us. The color guard coming out. We'll have the presentation of the colors and then the singing of the national anthem. And then we'll be underway with game number one of the 1981 NCAA Division I Championships. So proudly we hail at 
the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket red glare upon bursting in That our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave for the land of the free and the home of the brave. I was singing of our night anthem signifies we're just about ready to get underway the officials for our game tonight referee will be charlie holden of the ecac the assistant referee dennis parish of the ccha and the linesman steve dowling of the ecac there you see them lined up there bill neal let's quickly check those goaltenders again for these two clubs now joe as tom Mees mentioned earlier two very fine goaltenders for the university of minnesota number 35 paul butters 14 5 and 0 on the season 3.61 goals against the Average came on very strong the latter part of the season, played very solidly in the playoffs. For the Michigan Tech Huskies, number one, Frank Krieber, 5'11", 160-pound senior from Houghton, Michigan, 25-1 and one on the season, a very fine 3.11 goals against average, has been in between the pipes for the Huskies the last 18 games in a row has won 15 of those and the last nine in a row so he has played extremely well down the stretch as well well as those of you who are watching in color can tell as the Gophers file back to their bench Brad Buto the head coach there 32 11 and all the Gophers record this year the University of Minnesota dressed in the white shirts with gold trim they have white numerals on them on the arms and the dark numerals on the back they wear gold helmets and Michigan Tech under the direction of John McKinnis Right there, you see John's team's record this year, 28, 13, and 1. The Huskies dressed in the yellow with the black breezers. They have uh, white numerals and white lettering on their uniforms. Minnesota will be moving left to right on your screen, and uh, Michigan Tech right to left. And Bill will point out here that in this game and all of these games, they use the NCAA rule with no red line as opposed to the WCHA rule that we have seen from time to time using the red line. We are underway in the opening face-off controlled by the Huskies of Michigan Tech, but it's picked up and swept right back into the Huskies zone by Minnesota. Huskies with it in their own zone, picked off now by Mikulich. Mikulich, back of his own net, trapped along the boards. The puck cleared out to center ice, and taking a pretty solid hit for his efforts was Bill Terry. And, Bill, we talked about the idea of maybe using the pass off the boards. We did not anticipate these all-Western teams going to it, but it looked right there like Michigan Tech might decide to utilize it a little bit. Well, they may, and I think it probably would be to their advantage more so than Minnesota's to use it because they do not have quite the speed, and they like to use the physical game. If they can get the puck in the offensive zone, use the body and forecheck, it would be to their advantage. Face off to the right of Frank Krieber, the Husky goaltender, back to pick up the puck is Tim Waters. Waters checked back at the goal. Good job of checking by Bibstead. They tie it up along the boards, and we'll have a face-off coming up. Face-off will be in the Tech zone. It's a good look at Mike Kenoki, co-captain from Minneapolis. He's a senior, draft of the Minnesota North Stars. Just recently named to the Western All-Star team, along with teammate Steve Ulseth. Very fine defenseman. Face-off to Krieber's left this time, controlled by no one as yet along the near boards. Teal after it. Now moving in for Minnesota is Doshin. He couldn't come up with it. Dukestead goes in, but Krieber covers up the puck. We'll have a face-off coming up. We are just 33 seconds into the first period of play. We have had no score as yet. A lot of action so far in the Michigan Tech end. Joe, this line of uh, Teal, Dukestead, and Doshin has really come on as a very fine checking line for Minnesota. And not surprising to see them start the hockey game. Well, they're out there against Bill Terry and his line. Terry with 22 goals, so you get the idea that that's exactly what Coach Brad Buto is looking for out of this line in this game here tonight. Teal quickly in along the boards, trying to center the puck, but down on top of it to smother the play. Go the Huskies, and we'll have a face-off coming up. Wiley 
ended up on top of the puck, and uh, the uh, sophomore from Ladysmith, British Columbia, stops play right there. So yet another face-off coming up, and we have had four of them so far in the early going, Bill, and they have all, outside of the opener, been in the Tech zone. Well, I think that goes along with the, the early game jitters, Joe. The players are, of course, very tight, and uh, you tend to get more whistles in that kind of a situation. A few of the Minnesota players, very few, but a few, have been here before. They were the NCAA Division I champions in 1979. Face off to the right at Kreber. Zook, along with Teal on the draw. Teal dumps it into the corner. Waters after it. Now along the far boards, they try to clear it out. It's held in by Minnesota. Now a long pass up the far wing. Intended up uh, that wing for Long for Lowen. The puck goes back at the goal. Lowen couldn't get the stick down on it. Now they battle for it. Wilkinso in along the near boards after it. Minnesota ties it up there. We'll have our first faceoff coming up in the Minnesota end with 18.55 to go here in the first period. We are still scoreless, and we have a line change coming up. You mentioned that Minnesota team of a couple of years ago, Joe. Not too many of those players here, but a few of those guys ended up with some gold medals. Number seven out there is one of those players for Minnesota, Neil Rotten, and this is his first appearance in about four weeks on the ice in an official game. He's had a severely injured elbow, has not played since about a month ago, and uh, the Gophers are looking for some help for him. It's still doubtful as to just how efficient he will be. Puck in the Minnesota zone. Lowen trying to hold it in. It's cleared out to center ice. Michigan Tech in control, driven right back in again and steered wide of the goal by Butters. Minnesota with it in their own zone. They cough it up. A backhand shot, and Butters makes the save off the backhander by Lowen. Quickly on the far corner. Michigan Tech there. Lowen a drive hit the post. Rebound tipped over the top of the goal by Logan Soul. Goes to the near corner, and Tech with pressure now. Here in the first period, they came very close on the backhander by Logan Soul. Now Minnesota back with Ulsa. Ulsa had the puck slide off the end of his stick. Kreber covers up on top of it. We'll have a faceoff coming up in the Michigan Tech end. But Logan Soul came very, very close on the rebound, Bill, to putting it by Butters. He just got up a little too high. Well, I thought, uh, Joe, on the shot by uh, Lowen just prior to that, that the Butters was a little bit slow reacting on the shot. It got by him to his left and hit the goal post, nearly went in the net. Face off now will be to Kreber's right. That's the forte of Michigan Tech, the forechecking game, and that's what they want to try and do. It nearly paid off for them early. Big game like this, first goal, very important, Bill. See who gets it. Puck comes to center ice. Kenoki there for Minnesota. Had some trouble with it. Feeds it up to Aaron Broughton. Now over to Erickson. Butsy Erickson along the near boards. It goes back to the goal. Cleared around the boards by Wiley. Erickson there trying to hold it in. Picked up by Broughton. Feeds it out to Dillon. He banks it in the near boards. Rothstein drops it behind him, and it's picked off by Bain for Michigan Tech. He feeds it up ice for Johansson. Johansson into the Minnesota zone. He still has the puck. Now it's checked and cleared out to center ice. Palkovic steers it rink wide and driven right back in again. Around the boards. Minnesota controlling in their own zone. Michigan Tech picking up their forechecking right now. Bottling Minnesota up much more efficiently than they did in the early going. Here's Kenoki hustling up, trying to hold the puck in. Does. Kenoki check. Puts it in front. It was deflected by Rossi. They went a little wide. Didn't have much on it. He had Kreber beat, but couldn't get any mustard on it. Shot fired wide to the left for Minnesota by Bukestead. And now Michigan Tech comes away with it. Bain loses the puck. Picked up by Bukestead. Drives his shot, and Kreber got the glove on that. Missed wide to the right. Tech really checking in their own zone. and had Minnesota pretty well bottled up. They could not get to the rebound. Kenoki drives the puck into the Michigan Tech zone. Bukestead in after it. Schwartz goes to the boards. And they tie it up there along the boards. We get the whistle. Face-off coming up with 16.42 to go here in the first period. Some excellent play, but no scores yet. Here's a good look at Rick Bame. Led the team in scoring all three years. He's just a junior from Allen, Saskatchewan. Team most valuable player last year. And he's got all the moves in the world, Joe. And he gets the puck in the offensive zone. You've got to play the body all the way. Portion of the year, so uh, despite the fact he did miss a goodly part of the year, he still was able to put it by netminders 20 times. Puck in the Michigan Tech zone, they clear it out into the center ice area. 
Pearson can't quite catch up with it as he's all tied up in the center ice zone. Meadows backhands it out into center ice to get it out of the zone. They battle along the boards. Jensen after it. Jensen, just a freshman, dumps it in. Here's a shot by Teal, partially deflected by the defense. Yelmquist along the near boards, lost it. Picked off by Bukestead, drives the shot, and he missed wide on the left. Kreber came way out to cut down his angle, and Bukestead had to go wide and missed wide on the left side. They tie it up along the boards. Faceoff coming up now in the tech zone again with 16-13 to go in the first period. Minnesota coming up with a couple of scoring opportunities, especially by Bukestead the last couple times up the ice, Bill. Yes, he did, and he had Jeff Teal all alone. They had a two-on-one situation on uh, Waters back there for Michigan Tech, and Bukestead elected to shoot the puck rather than pass and miss wide. Quick shot again off the faceoff, and uh, this time it was Neil Broughton with a shot. He missed wide on the right-hand side. Meadows puts it on goal, and again, Kreber there to make the save. Back of the goal, check. They lose the puck. Centering pass by Hartzell. It's picked off by Michigan Tech, and Pearson starts back up the left side. Pearson into the Minnesota zone. His pass picked off by Olsen for Minnesota. Long pass. Hartzell in behind the defense. Shoots. Oh, he missed wide right on the right. He got behind Kreber and then pulled it a little too hard and went the, through the crease area. He had Kreber beaten. Best chance of the game for either club. Now Michigan Tech back. Long pass, and we had the offside call. There will be no goal on that shot. Close, close call right there. Good move by Hartzell, and he had his man beaten. Kevin Hartzell with 56 points on the season. Had only 28 last year. What a year he had, and here he sails in all alone on goaltender Frank Kreber and just fails to pull the lever. <laughs> Held on to it just a little bit too long. Great opportunity for Minnesota. Still scoreless. 15.35 to go. First period. Tech moves the puck into the Minnesota zone. Gophers fail to clear it out. Quick shot. Butter saves. And Bergloff has it for the University of Minnesota. Minnesota center ice. Long pass to Hartzell. Drives the shot. Kreber made the save as that shot went right between the legs of the defenseman. He was partially screened. Made the save anyway. Terry wheeling the center ice. Turned away by a check. Also hammers him into the boards. Carries on. Tripped up by Larson and also comes away with the puck for Minnesota. Steve also with it. Larson back to Olset. And the puck out in the center ice area picked up there by Mikulic for Michigan Tech. And Minnesota comes away with it now. Hartzell trying to feed it up to Neil Broughton. Broughton. And he took a solid check across the way from Tony Styles, And you can look for Tech to do a lot of that, I think, on Broughton, uh, Bill, to test that elbow of his as early as they can. They Here's will let him know it. that they know. Right. <laughs> Puck picked up by Aaron Broughton. Feeds it off. Quick shot. Kreber got the pad on it. One of the Gophers dumped back of the goal. Good solid check out in front to keep the area clear. Minnesota puts it back in front again. Minnesota swarming all over the Michigan Tech zone right now. And Tech, to take the pressure off, fires it down the ice. An icing call. They'll bring it back into the Tech end for the faceoff. With 14-18 remaining, we are still scoreless here in the first period. Game one of the 1981 NCAA Hockey Championships. Well, Joe, you know, there's been a lot of talk about Michigan Tech being the hottest team in the tournament, winning 16 of their last 19 games. But... Minnesota has won 16 of their last 20, so there's not a lot to give there. And two of their losses were in games that had come in the playoffs after they had run up almost insurmountable uh, leads in the opening game of the best of uh, the best two-game total goal series. Face-off will be to the left of Frank Weaver, although those two losses in the playoffs did upset Coach Buto quite a bit. Puck in the Michigan Tech zone. Jensen there to knock it down and hold it in. Dumped further in. This is Aaron Broughton in after it. Palkovich gets there first. They tie it up along the boards. We'll have yet another faceoff coming up in the Tech zone. And we have played a great deal of this first period, uh, the first six minutes, uh, in the Michigan Tech end. Tech with a few flurries down into the Minnesota end. But if there has been a territorial edge so far, Bill, it has to belong to Minnesota at this stage. Kraber has to make the shot or the save as the shot came through quite a bit of traffic. Puck back of the goal. Broughton couldn't get his stick down on it. Went up into the webbing and we'll have a faceoff coming up. That's Aaron Broughton, number 10, brother of Neil. Frank Kraber kind of got caught out in no man's land there. He wasn't he quite sure whether to smother the puck or try and bat it away and uh, almost got trapped. <laughs> faceoff controlled by Minnesota. They dump it out to the point to Kenoki. Kenoki trying to dump it in front. And it's cleared away, picked off by Wiley. 
Or Logan Soul, rather, drives it back to the Minnesota blue line. Minnesota clears it back out, and it ricochets in offside. Tom Meese, from up here, there appears to be a lot of solid hitting going on, particularly on the part of Michigan Tech. How does it look from your angle? Well, of course, we knew, Joe, that Michigan Tech would come out hitting. They are a very physical hockey team, but so far, no chipping. It's a lot of good clean hitting. And the one thing that surprised me, despite the fact they're working on the smaller ice service, Minnesota is controlling the play very well. The action carries on in the center ice zone. Minnesota with it. Erickson lost it. Lowen after it. If you want to see somebody that can motor on a pair of skates, if number 22 gets a hold of it for Michigan Tech, which he does right now and gets out in the open, just watch him go. He'll leave a smoke trail behind. He can move. Centering pass right through the crease and it's cleared off by Broughton. A shot by Lowen. He missed wide on the right and now Aaron Broughton with it in his own zone. Broughton fires it by Kenoki. Rostein over and he clears it into the center ice area. It'll go all the way back into the Tech zone and that would bring an icing call. So we'll move it back to the Minnesota end for the faceoff with 13.08 to go in the first period. Still no score here in the first period. There's a good job by number 10, Aaron Broughton, back helping out the goaltender back where a center should be in a defensive role, covering up the slot area, covering up in front of the net. Excellent two-way hockey player. He really is. Face off to the left of Butters, the Minnesota goalie. Minnesota controlling it back of their own goal. This is Larson with it. Bill, you have a connection with that young man. He played a little hockey for you at Western Michigan before coming back to Minnesota. He's a good one. Very smart hockey player. Here's Bergloff centering pass, and Kreber got the stick on that to clear it out from in front of the net area. Comes all the way back to the Minnesota blue line. Doshin all tied up along the near boards. Puck comes loose, and Bergloff there to try to drive it into the Tech zone does. Still in the Tech zone, picked up by Teal. Fire scores! Jeff Teal! 1-0 Minnesota! know whether they'll give an assist on it or not. One of the Michigan Tech players that touched it will wait and see. Time of the goal will be 7-23. Well, Michigan Tech getting tied up at their own blue line. Teal picks up the loose puck, sails in all alone, makes no mistake about it. Over the right shoulder of Frank Kreber. That's Teal's 14th goal of the season, and uh, Minnesota goes up 1-0. So the first goal of the game belongs to the University of Minnesota. We'll see how important that first goal is. Minnesota leads it 1-0. Puck in the Minnesota zone. We'll pick up the assists as soon as we get them for you. Now Tech right back. Centering pass knocked down out front by Larson. The young man we were just talking about did a good job defensively right there. Unassisted goal for Jeff Teal at 7-23. So no assists on Teal's goal, and Minnesota leads it 1-0 on the goal by Jeff Teal. Long pass at center ice. Now Tech moving back to the attack as Johansson comes into the Minnesota zone. Has the puck cleared back out to center ice. And again, Minnesota with it in the center ice area. Hartzell over for Meadows. Hartzell there to hold it in. Here, Neil Broughton couldn't catch up with it. Hartzell does, however. Hartzell tried to dump it in front, and we have our first penalty of the game coming up. It will go against Michigan Tech, a tripping call. So Minnesota will go to the power play. Wait on the yellow. Well, as we mentioned on in the, the open, yellow, Joe, the, the one thing front. Michigan Tech did not want to do was spend a lot of time in the penalty box. This is their first penalty. Coming to number 28, defenseman David Jensen. Minnesota on the season, operating 36% on the power play. Anything over about 28% is considered very good. So 36% is just outstanding. As here's a look at the penalty right there. No mistake about it. Good call by the official. So Minnesota now on the power play. Penalty to uh, Peterson rather than Jensen. The opposite number 28. So Minnesota on the power play, and as Bill points out, they have a very proficient one. Here's Kenoki over on the right point. Kenoki with it. Minnesota on the power play. Five on four situation. Olsa drops it back for Aaron Broughton. Back out now for Kenoki at the right point. Kenoki fakes the shot with the return pass, dumps it on the far side. Erickson couldn't get the shot off. Has it back out front for Neil Broughton. Fires. Loose puck in front. Creepers, they score! On the rebound. Minnesota leads it 2 nothing. I believe Butsy Erickson got the goal. May have been Alsip. We'll see. I Time think it of the is. goal will be 8.32. I think it is, Joe. Steve Alsip. Minnesota moves the puck very well in the power play. The initial shot and the deflection, and there you see Steve Alsep, Johnny on the spot, parked right outside the Michigan Tech crease. 
wide open net. All he had to do is simply flip the puck into the open net. His 41st goal of the season on the power play. Minnesota goes on top two to nothing. 8.42, the time of the goal by Alsip. We'll get the assist for you momentarily. Minnesota leads it two nothing here in the first period. Puck again back into the tech zone. And again, Minnesota continues to maintain that territorial edge. They have been in the tech zone throughout most of the first period of play. And we have played just about eight minutes of it right now. Actually, over eight minutes of it. Puck in the center ice area. Puck back into the Minnesota end. Aaron and Neil Broughton get the assists on the goal by Ulsa. So Aaron and Neil Broughton assist on the power play goal by Ulsa to give Minnesota a 2-0 lead. And we have had another penalty called. I think we have a pair of penalties, one on each team here, Joe. Yep. Appears to be a couple of elbowing penalties. Number eight, minor penalty for elbow in the yellow. Elbow is the call, no doubt about that. Number seven, minor penalty for slash. Neil Broughton will go for Minnesota and Mel Pearson for Michigan Tech. That assist, by the way, by Aaron Broughton, his 101st point of the year, and he is now just seven shy of the NCAA record set by Dave Taylor. So Neil Broughton and Mel Pearson go for elbowing. Both teams are players short. So neither team operating shorthand at this stage. Just a four-on-four -four situation. Both for elbowing. 9.30 the time of the penalty. Here's Tech busting up the middle. Styles, loose puck, butters, pokes it aside. And at the same time, is jammed back into the crease area, right into the net. Minnesota with the puck in their own zone. Aaron Broughton back after it. Both teams with four skaters now for the next minute and 25 seconds. Minnesota having a real problem now of getting the puck out of their end. They tip it by. Aaron Broughton with the move. Picks it up. He has also on the far side. Got it to him. Shoots. Oh, and Kramer with a big, big save. Frank Kramer with a great save on Steve Olsen, who came sliding in, took the pass from Aaron Broughton, and appeared to have a dead sense go, but Kramer cut him off and made the save. 9.33 remaining in the first period. One minute remaining in the penalty times to both Pearson and Broughton. Minnesota leading 2-0 here in the first game of the NCAA playoffs. That was just a tremendous save, Joe. Great, Great Kramer also was right there, wide open net. Tremendous save. Puck is passed behind Doshin, picked off by Palkovich, and he feeds it in to Lokenso. Lokenso trying to put it in front. Backhand shot goes through the crease. Caroms to the far side. Picked up over there by O'Connor. O'Connor puts it in front, but Bergloff there to pick it off for Minnesota. This is Bob Bergloff. O'Connor after it. Checked by Dosham. Michigan Tech comes away with it. Here's Lowen. Mike Lowen. Lokenso a drive and Butters kicks that out of there. O'Connor holds it in at the right point. Goes back of the goal, Larson with it. We have a penalty coming up. This one will go against Minnesota, I believe, a tripping call. So Minnesota will now operate shorthanded, four on three for 12 seconds, then five on four. Minnesota with their lone power play opportunity, scoring. Michigan Tech now with an opportunity. They will go four on three on the season, 53 of 232 opportunities, operating at 23%, so they have not been nearly as proficient on the power play as Minnesota, but they will get the power play opportunity right here. Minnesota in a penalty-killing role, done a very good job on the season, killing off at a 76% efficiency. I'll get it yet. <laughs> 11-18, the time of the penalty to Larson of Minnesota, who goes for tripping. Penalty handed out. Well, ESPN presents a basketball special. Originally, 264 NCAA Division I teams started the season out. There will be just two left as of Sunday, March 29th. That night at 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific time, Bob Lee, Dave Israel of the Chicago Tribune, and Dave Anderson of the New York Times will join forces to analyze the strengths and weaknesses of the two teams left, look at some highlights of the two teams in action. So you're invited to join us Sunday at 10 p.m. Eastern time 
here on ESPN, your total sports network for them. There were two. Face off in the Minnesota zone. Four on three opportunity for Michigan Tech. Here's Perry, a drive, and he just missed wide on the right. Puck picked up by Doshin for Minnesota along the near board. And now picked off by Kenoki. His pass for Doshin. Doshin at center ice. Now a five on four situation as both Broughton and Pearson are back on the ice. So five on four now in favor of Michigan Tech. And Bill, we should point out, both of these teams can score shorthanded. Both can be scored shorthanded again. That has happened to them several times this year. Minnesota, as a matter of fact, had five shorthanded goals scored against them in one game. Clearing pass for Minnesota takes the pressure off. 120 remaining in the penalty time to Larson. Mark Larson in the penalty box for tripping for Minnesota. Waters drives the puck back into the Minnesota and Teal after it, along with Bain. Teal tied up, double teamed, and Bain clears it after the point for Terry. Terry slides it over to Waters. Waters trying to get things set up if he can. Along the near boards, picked up by McKellick. And it's uh, Mikulich, rather, driven around the board. Terry has it now at the point. Now Waters cranks up the shot, drives, and he just missed wide on the right side, and Butters reacted a little slowly on that. 44 seconds left in the penalty time to Larson. Puck back of the goal for Michigan Tech. Had a little trouble deciding who was going to handle it. Johansson does finally. Now Terry. Now Bain. Up on the side for Johansson. There's Terry out front. Now Waters. Drives the shot, missed way wide on the right side that time. 24 seconds left in the penalty to Larson. Michigan Tech throwing the puck around at will. That shot hit a defenseman out front. Karam off to the side. Bergloff has lost his stick. So Minnesota down to four skaters, one without a stick. Ten seconds left in the power play. Here's Waters with it. Waters trying to put it on the far side, hit the broken stick of Bergloff. So despite the fact he lost the stick, it came into play and helped Minnesota right there. He's to be in the right spot at the right time. Larson is back on. Minnesota back at full strength through they have killed. The Michigan Tech power play opportunity. 6.34 remaining in the first period. Minnesota with a 2-0 lead over Michigan Tech. Here's Rothstein back for the Golden Gophers. Trying to tip it around. Yelmquist and Yelmquist just hauled into the ice. One of the fans wanted the penalty there. Did not get it. Jensen trying to hold it in. Cannot. Puck comes loose. Rothstein after it. Rothstein, one of the family of several athletes who have played hockey in the WCHA for various schools, and he's another of a long line, all from the Grand Rapids, Minnesota area. Puck at the Michigan Tech blue line. They drive it down into the Minnesota end as the puck fired down by Peterson. Back at the goal, Meadows steers it around on the far boards for Rothstein. Rothstein trying to get by. Lowen does. Feeds it up to Aaron Broughton. Broughton trying to dump it behind for Rothstein, and he is hammered into the board. Peterson really throwing his weight around now. Here's Erickson moving in. Fake the shot, dumps it in front, and it's picked off by Peterson and cleared out to center ice. Now Meadows with it. Drives it right back into the tech zone. 5.30 remaining in the first period. Minnesota leads it to nothing. Bill, the tempo seems to have slowed down just a wee bit. Well, I think it has, Joe. Min uh, Michigan Tech just unable to get any flow to their play. Uh, Minnesota completely dominating at this point of the game. It is early, however, and hockey a strange game. Momentum can change instantly. Here, Neil Broughton in the Tech zone. Check from behind by Peterson. Taken into the board. Still has the puck. Still has it. Feeds Meadows. Meadows couldn't get the shot off. He came roaring up the pipe. Couldn't get the shot off. Still has it. Has it come off out the center ice. Minnesota has to get back on side. Picked off. Here's Zook. Runs into a check by Meadows and loses the puck. Long pass up the right wing for Neil Broughton. Broughton, a real magician with the puck, but remember, he's been out of action for an extended period of time. Neil Broughton with it. Got by one man, still has it. Got by another, still has it. Feeds it off to Hartzell, and he got the shot off. They put it in front, and Tech comes away with it. Great job by Broughton. Kreber there to make the save. Puck into the Minnesota zone. Butters way out of the goal and just clears it away from O'Connor. Puck dumped back of the net. Pearson trying to center it. Palkovich in, sends it along the far side. Centering pass picked off by Minnesota's Hartzell, and he heads back the other way. 4-10 remaining in the first period. Drop pass for Kenoki. Back for Hartzell. Shoots, and he missed wide to the left. Kreber may have gotten a stick on it. Minnesota controlling the puck in the Tech zone, really moving around almost at will. Michigan Tech with it. They bank it off the boards. 
important bill for Michigan Tech to get the next goal in this game. Well, it really is. The way Minnesota can score, they do not want to fall too far behind, and they are not an offensive team. So if they get behind three to nothing, it'll be a long climb back for them. Palkovich with the puck. Wink wide pass. Back for Palkovich up the left side. Got it up for Terry. He's checked and it offside. Results. Tom Mays down at ice level. The Michigan Tech attack, as Bill Neal points out, unable to get going at this juncture. We understand that we have lost the video portion of our broadcast, so we will attempt to keep you posted as to what's going on audio-wise as uh, until we get our picture back. We ask you to please bear with us. We will bring you a radio broadcast until we regain the use of our video facilities, so just bear with us, please. We expect to have the picture restored momentarily. The puck into the Michigan Tech zone. Kreber leaves it back at the goal, picked up there by Waters. Waters starts back up the center of the ice, feeds a right-wing pass up the far side for Wiley. He's cut off by Jensen. Teal picks up the puck and tried to clear it back out to the center ice area, but in the process, put it up over the boards into the crowd, and we'll have a face-off coming up now in the uh, Minnesota end with 3.20 remaining here in the first period. Minnesota out in front 2-0 on goals by Teal at 7.23 unassisted and by Olsen from the Rotten Brothers at 8.42. It appears that, that uh, Minnesota is controlling the game and the tempo at this stage at any rate with 3.20 remaining here in the first period. Faceoff will come to the left of Netminder. Paul Butters, the sophomore from Rochester, Minnesota. Draw control by Tech. Quick shot. Skitters wide to the right of the net. In the Minnesota zone. Mikulich after it. Mikulich comes away with it for Michigan Tech. Feeds it on the far side. Jensen battling with Mikulich, and Jensen comes away with it. Now Teal had it and lost it to Terry. Terry for Michigan Tech. Terry, back of the goal, trying to put it out front. Does her shot, hits traffic, and caroms away from the side. Terry along the far board. Hugstead trying to steal it. Terry controlling the puck very well for Michigan Tech right now. Wiley puts it back out front for Stiles. And it's picked off along the near side by Mikulic. Mikulic put it right to the crease. They score! Wide open was Bill Terry. Mikulic with the pass. So Michigan Tech gets that all-important goal. They're right back in it. It's 2-1. Terry will get the goal. And Mikulic will get one assist. Yellow, 7-10-17. A very good forward checking uh, in the Minnesota zone. Good persistence by the Huskies of Michigan Tech. The puck bounces through a number of legs, and Bill Terry, very much the opportunist, the very fine freshman from Scarborough, Ontario, with a wide open net, simply slides the puck in behind Butters. That's Terry's 23rd goal of the season. Michigan Tech narrows the gap to 2-1. to one. Wiley and Mikulich get the assist. The time of the goal, 17-18. A big, big goal for Tech. Minnesota comes right back and scores! Button. Wide open as Kreber left the goal. The puck took a carom off the boards. Broughton was there, slammed it home. It's 3-1 to Minnesota. They come right back. Crushing blow for Michigan Tech right there. They had just gotten back in this game, Bill Neal. That, that is just a devastating goal for Michigan Tech. Ten from five. Well, you know, I talked with Ten both coaches, five. Joe, about the rink and the ice and some of the those kinds of things here. And both coaches agreed they hated to see, both, although both teams have to play in the same ice, they hated to see a bad bounce result in a goal, and it appears that's exactly what happened there. Well, Aaron Broughton will get the goal for Minnesota, his 44th goal and 102nd point of the year, and Minnesota right back to the attack again. The time of that goal, 17.25, just seven seconds after Terry had gotten Michigan Tech on the board. Darren Broughton boosts Minnesota's lead back to two goals. There it is. You can see Kreber out of the net, and uh, Joe, you even you could have scored that one, I think. I, I'd have to agree with you. For the first time this year, I might have made that one. 2.34 remaining in the first period, 3-1, and you it, take them when you can get them, and they'll take that one. I'm sure that may be one of the easier of 102 points that Broughton has collected this year. Well, he's now just, I believe, five points shy of, or six points shy of Taylor's all-time record, so he still has a chance if this team continues to play in this tournament. Right now, they lead 3-1. 2.23 remaining here in the first period. Aaron Broughton with the goal for Minnesota, and Broughton with the defensive play right there to clear the puck away from the side. And back out to Minnesota's 
or to the center zone, picked off by Styles for Michigan Tech. Schwartz dumps it into the Minnesota zone where it's pulled right back out again, and Tech has it. Long pass too far for Bain. Bart Larson there. Minnesota still in their own zone. Waiting on each other. They almost coughed up the puck, but now Rothstein comes away with it. Rothstein spots the open gap, drives the shot, and Kreber makes the save, and the loose puck cleared away from in front of the goal by Styles. Styles checked by Neil Broughton from behind. Carries on to center ice. Neil Broughton steals the puck. Broughton with only one man back. Water shoots. Just missed right on the left. And Kreber pounces on top of the rebound. Four of those boards back at the goal are lively. That one just came caroming off there. And Kreber very alertly covered up on top of it. Neil Broughton, a very fine back checking effort what coming up right here. What do you think of Broughton's elbow now? <laughs> Ask the Tech players. <laughs> there he goes, the All-American from Roseau, Minnesota. WCHA Rookie of the Year two years ago, of course, with the Olympic team last year. And shows part of the reason why he was named the recipient of the Hobie Baker Award, emblematic of the College Hockey Player of the Year. That issued by the Decathlon Club of Minneapolis. Very deserving recipient. 135 remaining in the first period. 135 remaining in the first period. We'll remind you we have NHL hockey. Channel 5 Eyewitness News. So to game one of the 1981 NCAA Division I Hockey Championships. Defending champion, the University of North Dakota, eliminated. They are no longer in contention. So we are down to four, and we have a delayed call coming up. Neil Broughton down on the ice. Lost his helmet. I did not see what happened. It was away from the puck. May have happened right on the faceoff, and Neil is, Neil's got blood on his face. This is not there's, the, there's the shot at the blue line, but, but that's uh, not what took Broughton out. Broughton I, has blood all over his face. I don't think that's the penalty. No, I don't think so. It appears that he has a cut beside his left eye. Uh, it'll be a five-minute major, I think, uh, Joe. Well, we'll see who's going to go for Michigan Tech. Waters, I believe. Well, Waters coming over we'll to find 28 out. 28 yellow. He's the team captain. Five minutes for high for sticking. Tech. High stick. minute major penalty. Now this could really be devastating to Michigan Tech. Minnesota. Well, Bill, as a coach, we I've got to ask you the question right here. The blood makes it automatic, right? Yes, it does. Okay. Clear that up from earlier in the season. <laughs> All, right. All right. So Michigan Tech already down three to one. Will operate shorthanded as Don Peterson draws his second penalty. He goes for high sticking. Peterson playing in place of number 24, Jeff Johnston, who has a knee injury. Johnston, the team's outstanding defenseman last year and uh, very fine defenseman for Michigan Tech, and they are really missing him right now. And Skip Peterson, the victim of a couple of very costly penalties. The first one resulted in a Minnesota goal on the power play. That by Steve Ulseth. And now he goes into the penalty box for a five-minute major penalty. Of course, in a major penalty, should Minnesota score, he does not return to the ice uh, until the five-minute penalty is over. So they could theoretically score as many goals as they could get in in that period of time. And a minor penalty, of course, two-minute minor penalty if the opposition scores on the power play, the player returns to the ice. So Minnesota will be on the power play for five minutes right now, unless they should draw a penalty of their own, of course, which would cut into the power time. There is your power play conversion in the game thus far. One for one for Minnesota, and 0 for one for the Huskies of Michigan Tech, as Bill pointed out earlier. Minnesota's power play operates at uh, 36, let's see, is it 36%, Bill? 36%, 36.3%. Michigan Tech kills penalties at uh, 77%. So two excellent teams in those departments. And again, we'll point out that Michigan Tech 
has scored 13 shorthanded goals this year. Minnesota has uh, been caught shorthanded several times this year. The puck in the Tech zone, third away from in front by Kraber, and Michigan Tech tears it down the zone, down the ice. We have 117 remaining here in the first period, so the penalty time will carry over into the second period in Minnesota's favor. Big stage in this game, Bill, defensively for Michigan Tech, if they should be able to escape unscathed here. Big stage offensively for Minnesota. They could break it open right here. Absolutely. Very key part of the hockey game coming up right here. Puck in the Michigan Tech zone, picked up by Sparrow, and he banks it off the boards out to center ice. Got it up to Bissett. Bissett, return pass from Sparrow. Bissett along the left side, and he just dumps it in, content to kill off as much time as he can. Kenoki back of his own goal. 45 seconds remaining here in the first period. Minnesota leads it 3-1, and they are on an extended power play. Puck knocked down by Sparrow. Minnesota controls, but Sparrow there to steer it back to Stiles, and he drops it back to the Minnesota blue line. Gophers having some problems getting it into the tech zone. Now they just dump it in with 27 seconds remaining in the period. Stiles trying to clear it out. Knocked down by Neil Broughton, the man who took the cut. Here's Kanoki, a drive, and it just missed wide on the left side. Aaron Broughton steals it back out to Neil Broughton. Has the open shot, drives the shot, and Creeper makes the save on that. Erickson after it, trying to hold it in. Waters banks it off the boards out to center ice, and Kenoki has it with just five seconds left for Minnesota. Here's Neil Broughton. Got by one man, shoots, scores! Neil Broughton with one second left of the period. Another great move by the All-American and former Olympic hockey player, Neil Broughton. It's 4-1 Minnesota. Seven. Would you ten, think this young 14, man had not played in the seven, last 10 hockey games? Eight. What a move. <laughs> One second remaining in the first period. 17th goal of the season for Neil Broughton. Minnesota leads it 4-1. to one. Another power play goal. What a move and an excellent shot. No chance for Kreber. Good, solid wrist shot. That elbow was evidently causing him no trouble at all. He got a lot of mustard on that shot. The time runs out as the puck is dropped. And that will do it for the first period. We will point out here that the penalty time remaining, three minutes and 31 seconds on Don Peterson, will carry into the second period. So despite the fact Minnesota has picked up another power play goal, that power play will continue into the second period. The scoring very quickly in that first period for Minnesota. Teal at 7.23, one nothing Minnesota. Also at 8.42, 2 nothing Minnesota. Then Terry for Michigan Tech at 17.18 of the period, 2-1 in favor of Minnesota. Aaron Broughton just seven seconds later, 17.25 of the period, made it 3-1 favor of Minnesota. And Neil Broughton, just as the period was about to expire at 19.59, another power play goal, made it 4-1. And that's where we are at the end of the first period of play. The shots on goal in that first First period, Minnesota outshooting Michigan Tech 15 to 7. Our score at the end of one period, Minnesota 4, Michigan Tech 1. We'll have more hockey when we return to Duluth. First point of the year for Aaron Broughton as he starts closing in on Dave Taylor's NCAA record. Well, Minnesota with a 2-0 lead appeared to be in command of the game, but Michigan Tech uh, never a team to give up, and they got back in this hockey game and appeared to be ready to make a real fight of it as they got on the board for the very first time, a little bit over halfway through the first period of play, and they made a game of it at that stage, making the score 2-1, to one, and uh, that's the way it went in the first period. Minnesota coming up with that last goal on the power play by Neil Broughton, just moments, or actually just one second before the end of the period, and uh, that made it four to one at that stage, and three minutes, 31 seconds remain in the penalty to Peterson, who went for slashing uh, in the first period of play, so Minnesota will be on the power play when we start the second period, and we're just about ready to do so. About 331 remaining in the Michigan Tech penalty, of course. Uh, Peterson will not return should Minnesota score again. They have already scored once. Uh, on the power play, their second power play goal of the game. So it's very critical here for Michigan Tech to kill off the time and, and get, get out of this just trailing by three goals. So Minnesota on the power play for another three minutes and 14 seconds as we are underway with the second period of play. Minnesota now moving right to left on your screen and Tech 
left to right. So the puck now in the Minnesota zone, despite the fact Minnesota on the power play. Tech controlling it. Styles comes away with it. Remember, Minnesota has been vulnerable shorthanded this year. And we have a penalty coming up on Minnesota now. And this will even things up for all but 54 seconds of the remaining penalty time on Peterson. So a big, big break right there for the Huskies of Michigan Tech, Bill. Yeah, Mike Kenoki, the well, five in the white, minor penalty high for stick. the University five of Minnesota, second stick. on the team in penalties with 82. And he now has 84, the holding penalty right there on Styles behind the net. Good job by Tony Styles, and Kenoki ties him up and will serve two minutes, and that uh, is a big break, as you mentioned, Joe, for Michigan Tech. 37 seconds, the time of the high-sticking penalty on Kenoki. So the two teams with four skaters apiece for the next two minutes, and then Minnesota will go back on the power play for 54 seconds, but that certainly has to bring a sigh of relief to the Michigan Tech bench because uh, operating for an extended period of time shorthanded can really be uh, a taxing thing on a hockey team not only uh, just the fact that you had that potential for the goal but the fact that it wears on your penalty killing so very much as the game progresses so a four on four situation Minnesota with the puck and Olsen or Hartzell rather feeds it to Teal Teal gets by one man puts it in front hit the goal post they score Hartzell on the follow up tipped it just wide at Kreber the puck lay there and he just tipped it in. It is 5-1 Minnesota. And Hartzell gets the goal. Teal will get one assist. Kevin Hartzell with his 27th goal of the season. Takes it off the goal post. Wide open net again. Good feed from Teal. Teal has been seeing a lot of ice time of late in penalty killing rolls. This time four on four. But a nifty pass through to Kevin Hartzell. 27th goal in the season, as I mentioned, and uh, Minnesota now opens up a very commanding 5-1 lead. Still four on four. The two teams had equal strength. Bergloff and Teal get the assist on Hartzell's goal, 51 seconds into the second period. And Minnesota with a big 5-1 margin right now. And here they come back again. Teal breaking for the net. A drive. Gaber saves. Loose puck beside the goal. Minnesota try to ram it home. And finally, Kreber able to get it underneath the pads and hang on to it. Minnesota only seems to know one direction, Bill, and that's the Michigan Tech goal, and they go for it. Now, Minnesota is just awesome at this point in the game. The drive by Kevin Hartzell, who just scored the goal. Kreber with the save, and once again, Minnesota right there. First man to the rebound. They hit the goal post, and Kreber able to cover up. Faceoff will come in the Michigan Tech zone to the left of netbinder Frank Kreber. 3.11 goals against average on the year. He has won nine straight games, and right now he has five big ones up on the board. But Tech, not out of this thing yet. They are an excellent hockey team. 116, the penalty time remaining on Kenoki, and then Minnesota will go back on the power play again. Puck intercepted by Erickson, feeds it to the right wing, but nobody there, and O'Connor drives it right back into the Minnesota zone. Aaron Broughton after it, gets it away from Johansson. Jensen steers it around the boards, trying to get it over to Erickson if he can, and it's held in by O'Connor. O'Connor drives the shot and butters, gets the stick on that. Young Minnesota netminder has not had a lot of activity, but he has churned thus far seven of the eight shots that have been fired at him by Michigan Tech away. 18-16 remaining in the second period of play. Tom Mees down at ice level. That last goal by Minnesota, really a big one for the Gophers and puts the onus on Michigan Tech. Faceoff will come to the right of Butters, the Minnesota netminder. Bain for Michigan Tech. The draw taken by Minnesota's also, or Hartzell rather, controlled by Tech. And we have a whistle of faceoff as the puck goes up into the crowd. Faceoff will come outside of the faceoff circle in the Minnesota zone. It's a good look at Tim Waters, member last year of the Canadian Olympic team. Top defenseman in 78-79 for Tech. His two goals and 13 assists in his last eight games, and they could really use some offense from him right here. 45 seconds remaining in Kenoki's penalty time, and then Minnesota goes back on the power play. Bergloff comes away with the puck for Minnesota, has it slide off the end of his stick, held in by Waters, but Jensen there to cover up for Minnesota. Puck cleared out to center ice, picked up by Teo. Teal with it, and he is turned away by Yelmquist, and it's cleared out to center ice. 
One of the Michigan Tech players went down, kept looking back for a penalty. That was Johansson, and was very surprised when the whistle didn't blow. And quickly got back to his feet. Kreber stops the puck beside the goal. Waters checked from behind by Teal. He goes down, and we're going to get a penalty on Minnesota. So Tech gets what they want finally, and Teal will go to the penalty box for tripping. So for a minute, well, let's see. Let's figure this out. There is nine seconds remaining in the penalty Final time penalty to Tanoki, White, number 20 and 103 remaining trip. in Peterson's penalty time. So for the next nine seconds, Michigan Tech will have a power play advantage. There's then the, the situation will even up because of this penalty right here. Not much question about that one. Teal for tripping at 228 of the period. It's his 19th penalty of the season for Jeff Teal. Now let's see. Michigan Tech with a power play for nine seconds, then four skaters apiece for a... I'll figure this out eventually <laughs> for 54 seconds, and then uh, Michigan Tech will go back on the power play again. Uh, at that stage so a very short panel there power play coming up four on three for Michigan Tech and then even Steven for 54 seconds after that and then Tech goes back on the power play we need a computer up here to figure these things out Buck in the Minnesota zone they are operating shorthanded and clear the puck down the ice penalty time has expired now on Kenoki so Minnesota with four skaters and Michigan Tech with four skaters at this juncture in 45 seconds Michigan Tech will go on the power play but remember as we pointed out earlier, Minnesota has been scored on shorthanded this year, as has Michigan Tech. So both teams are vulnerable in that situation. Now here's Lowen. Lowen, a Minnesotan himself, playing against the team representing his home state. Dumps it into the Minnesota board, takes Bergloff to the boards. Hartzell came away with it, checked out front, and it's cleared to center ice by Aaron Broughton. In 15 seconds, Michigan Tech will go on the power play. They'll have it for just under a minute. Puck tipped into the Minnesota zone. Bergloff and Lowen in pursuit. Bergloff steers it away from Lowen. Yelmquist there to try to hold it in, but it's cleared out to center ice by Aaron Broughton. Zook trying to drive it in. Cannot. And Waters knocks it down at his own blue line. Now Michigan Tech on the power play as Peterson is back on the ice. So the penalty time on Peterson has expired. Michigan Tech on the power play. Five on four. Kenoki coughs up the puck. They put it in front. Wilkins Soul with a shot. And it's picked up now by Lowen. Lowen. For Michigan Tech. Trying to put it in front. Turned away. Goes to the far corner. 30 seconds remaining in the Michigan Tech power play. Zook misfired. Tried to get it over on the near side to Wilkins And it's dumped back of the goal now. Kenoki after it. Kenoki checked into the boards. They tie it up. We'll have a faceoff coming up with 15.52 remaining in the second period and 20 seconds remaining in Teal's penalty time. Here you see Frank Lokensoul, number 14, parked off to the left of Butters and just fails to connect on the shot. He had a wide open net. If he could have gotten control of the puck, it was bouncing on him a little bit and he just failed to get the shot away. Here's a, here's a good look at it. Good setup on the power play by Michigan Tech. Just failed to connect. Face off will be to the right of netminder Paul Butters of Minnesota. And Ulster clears it out to center ice. Tech will have to get back on side. 15 seconds remaining in the Michigan Tech power play. And again, Minnesota clears it out of the zone. Picked up, well, Ulster overskated the puck. Terry, head man, gets it up to Johansson. Johansson up the right wing. Drop pass for Bain. Bain on his backhand, shovels it out front, knocked down behind the goal by Jensen. And finally, Minnesota comes away with it. Minnesota is back at full strength. And also beats his way around Nikolic. Drops it off in front, a shot, and Kreber steers that off to the side as Teal got the shot off. Teal with the puck. Teal tries to take the shot. It's deflected by a stick, comes to the near boards. Goshen goes in along the boards for Minnesota, along with Johansson. Now Waters comes away with it. Steers it over for Terry. 15 minutes remaining in the second period. Minnesota comfortably in front at this juncture. 5-1. to one. Winner, of course, will advance to the championship game of the 1981 NCAA hockey tournament. So the one thing in favor of, uh, of course, Minnesota well ahead, but for Michigan Tech, there is enough time. If they can start a comeback, of course, they've got to get them one goal at a time, but if they could narrow that gap to a couple of goals by the end of this period and maintain some momentum going into the third period, they would have a shot at it. It's a long haul to come back at this point, but they are not out of the game. John McInnes trying to win another NCAA 
state title. Michigan Tech has won it in 62, 65, 70, and 75. Minnesota in 74, 76, and 79. So the two teams have been the route before as Butter covers up on top of that puck to stop play. They have both been this distance before. And strangely enough, Bill, the last three times these teams have met in the NCAA, it was for the NCAA championship. And Michigan Tech finally getting some offense together, and Butters tested a little bit right here, but uh, not too much problem. Able to couple, cover up with a face off to his left. Took a pretty good stick up around the facial area, too. 14 51 remaining in the second period. Minnesota up 5 1 over the Huskies of Michigan Tech. Styles steers it over on the far side. A quick shot. But Palkovich goes back at the goal. Loose puck beside the goal. Comes right out in front. Minnesota there to pick it off. Still in the Minnesota zone. Styles holds it in. Now picked off by Jensen. Off the boards to center ice. Knocked down by Palkovich. And he steers it up the right side for Pearson. Pearson drives it back into the Minnesota zone. Pearson puts it in front. And he has really had some big goals for Michigan Tech during his career, Bill. We've seen a couple of them in that Great Lakes tournament for the Huskies. To Williger. Head man's gets it up to Larson. And loose puck in front. Jensen shoots. Kramer saves. Great save by Kramer on the backhander by Jensen. As he slid by the front of the goal. Puck back at the net. They battle for it. Styles there. Terwilliger takes it away from him. Now it goes back at the goal up on top of the webbing. And we'll have a faceoff coming up. Terwilliger getting his stick up along with Bissett. We'll have a faceoff coming up. There's Captain Crunch, Tony Stiles, the junior from Carstairs, Alberta. 5'11", 200-pounder. Leads the team in penalties with 54 minutes, so he throws his weight around. Joe Boyle, along with Bill Neal, Tom Meese, here at the Duluth Arena in Duluth. And you're watching the 1981 NCAA Division I Ice Hockey Championships on ESPN. A shot hits the goal post. Hartzell got the shot off, and he hit the goal post. Got it by Kruber, now also. Back in his own zone, check, and the puck goes back of the goal, steered around the board over on the far side for Larson, picked up now by Olsen. Olsen did center ice for Minnesota. Had the puck knocked off the end of his stick, Hartzell there to hold it in, Olsen dumps it in the far corner, Neil Broughton and O'Connor go in along the boards. Hartzell comes in, they tie it up, we'll have a faceoff coming up. 13-32 remaining in the second period, Minnesota leads it 5-1. And the faceoff will come in the Michigan Tech zone. Only goal of the period, 51 seconds of the period. Hartzell for Minnesota. And that made it 5-1. He almost had another one right there. This game could be about 10-1, to 1, Joe. Uh, Michigan Tech having pucks bouncing off the goal post. Kreber coming up with a couple of big saves. They've got to get their offense together. Here's Kanoki a drive. That hits traffic out front, and it's picked off for Michigan Tech by Yeldenquist. Feeds it around the board. Jensen there to hold it in. Puts it in front. Kreber... Steers it away, held in by Minnesota. Jensen with it. Jensen trying to put it in front. Back at the goal. They put it out front, and Zook there to pick it up for the Huskies of Michigan Tech. Zook up the left wing, has two men with him. Had Lowen flying up the right side, and Kanoki just stapled him to the board. And now a collision between Wilkinson and Meadows. Minnesota comes away with the puck. 12.59 remaining in the second period. Rostein is decked at center ice. Jensen there to cover up for Minnesota. Puck out of the center ice area. And Erickson takes a pretty good shot from Wilkinsoll in the center ice area. Now Aaron Broughton feeds it over on the right wing for Butsy Erickson. Steered away from him by Yelmquist. Minnesota trying to hold it in the tech zone if they can. Aaron Broughton has it taken away by Terry. Dumped right back into the Michigan tech zone. And O'Connor drives it back into the Minnesota end. Butters falls on top of the puck as Nikolic was there looking for some type of a rebound. 12-28 remaining here in the second period. We still have a 5-1 score. Minnesota out in front. University of Minnesota in the playoff, the WCHA playoff, beating Minnesota Duluth and Colorado College, and then Colgate in the opening round of the NCAA. Michigan Tech defeating North Dakota and Michigan in the WCHA playoffs, and then at Providence defeated the University of Providence 13-8 in the two-game total goal series. Quick shot from the point. Butters handles that bouncing puck off Peterson's stick. Picked off by Bergloff now for Minnesota. He banks it off the boards. Waters at the left point holds it in. The pass picked off by Minnesota's Bergloff. 
And he starts it up the left side to Bukestead. Bukestead gets by one man, drops it out to Bergloff, drives the shot high over the top of the goal. Comes to the near board. Larson trying to put it in front for Doshin. Quick shot by Bukestead. That's knocked down in front. And Kreber sprawls out, hauls in the rebound, and hangs on to it with 12 minutes remaining in the period. Well, these teams have been here before, as we pointed out. Bill Kent trip for Michigan Tech. This is the ninth trip for the University of Minnesota. And both are used to being in at the finish because uh, Tech has been in the final seven out of their nine times here, and Minnesota seven out of the eight times they have been here. Uh, one of them will not be in the finals after this one and uh, the way Michigan Tech is playing, although I shouldn't get down too much on them. I think it's simply the fact Minnesota is playing so well that uh, they are just not allowing Michigan Tech to do much of anything. Kreber keeping them in the hockey game right now. Face off to Kreber's right, comes out to Jensen, trying to put it in front for Hartzell. Pass was behind him. Hartzell steers it out to the point. Meadows drives his shot, and Kreber got a pad on that. Ricochets to the near corner. Picked up by Wiley. Wiley trying to muscle his way along the boards, and Jensen there to drive it right back to the goal again. Waters checked by Hartzell. Now Mikulic checked out of the play. Mikulic carries on for Tech. Moves it to center ice. Minnesota blue line drops it off for Terry. That's broken up by Broughton. Cleared out to center ice. Hartzell over for Olsen. Olsen looking for a man to pass to. Taken into the board by Peterson. They bring it back out to the point of Jensen. He drives the shot. Stolen away by Broughton. Puts it in front and there to pick it up is Nikolic for Michigan Tech. Now Terry up the right wing for Tech. Trying to find somebody to pass to. Nobody there. He's taken up along the board. And the puck held in by Wiley. Tried to put it out front. Does. It's cleared away. Now Tech holding it in. Tech starting to pick up their forechecking in the Minnesota zone. And a long run for that one. And we're going to have a penalty handed out against Michigan Tech. I believe it'll be Wiley that'll go. And not too much doubt about that one, Bill. He came from a long way off and got those elbows up in the air pretty high. Yellow number 10. Here comes penalty Jeff Wiley, the, the sophomore from British Columbia. And watch the shot right here on Mike Meadows. Meadows goes down in a heap. The official's arm goes up in the air. And Wiley will serve a two-minute minor penalty for either elbowing or charging. Elbowing is the call. It appears, Bill, that a little bit of frustration beginning to set in now at Tech is they've uh, taken a few runs at some of the Minnesota players. Well, that's their game, the physical game. Right. But, uh, it appears that they're a little frustrated right yeah, now. Yeah, I think they are. They have not been able to catch Minnesota to hit them, and when they have, they've sat in the penalty box, and Minnesota's turned it around on them and scored goals. So just about everything Tech has uh, tried to do has uh, gone against them so far. Paul Butters, the Minnesota netminder, making some equipment adjustments. The penalty on Wiley for elbowing at 9.08. Minnesota back on the power play again. They have two power play goals in this game. Face off in the center ice area. Controlled by Minnesota. Neil Broughton. Erickson drops it over for Aaron Broughton. Aaron Broughton trying to get it back to Erickson. Could not have Styles there to break it up. Along the near boards, Erickson comes away with it. Erickson cuts in front, shoots, Kreber saves, and it's cleared away. Kenoki holds it in at the right point. Kenoki trying to set it up for Minnesota. Off on the side. Return pass for Kenoki. Manages to hold it in, but it's knocked down by Baim, and he sends it back into the Minnesota zone. Neil Broughton back after it, and Baim after Broughton. Broughton still has the puck. 120 remaining in the penalty time for Wiley. Minnesota back on the power play. Ulsa steaming up the right side. Ulsa shot. Kreber club. Tip deflection wide to the left. Comes out to Broughton. Steers it over in front for Kenoki. Couldn't handle the pass. And Pelkovich clears it to center right. Picked off there again by Minnesota with 105 remaining in the power play. Here's Erickson. Rink wide for Broughton. Out to Kenoki. Kenoki drives the shot. Kreber saves. Covers up on top of it. We'll have a faceoff coming up. Now this line of uh, Aaron Broughton, Olseth, and Erickson drove 66 power play goals on the season between the three of them. So they have really been something on the power play, and Minnesota still has 56 seconds remaining on the power play. Minnesota 2 for 3 on the power play. In this game, Michigan Tech 0 for 3. And Minnesota leads on the board 5 to 1. They still have 56 seconds remaining in this power play opportunity. Just one team back from the field in the NCAA Final Four a year ago. And that, the Huskies, or excuse me, the Wildcats of Northern Michigan. 
the other three teams, newcomers this year, Bill, University of Wisconsin, Michigan Tech, and Minnesota. At least newcomers this year, they have all been in the NCAA before. Buck in the Michigan Tech zone, still on the power play, Minnesota. Hartzell with it. Left point now for Larson. Bart Larson moves over to the middle, drives a shot up the chute. Get by Kramer, there to jam at home is Thiel. Now, he was in the crease. They may say he had been knocked in the crease, shoved in there. There's no doubt about the fact he was in the crease, Bill. I don't think he was standing in there, but he could have been shoved in, and then they would allow the goal. At any rate, they have allowed the goal. Well, the thing is, Joe, he can go into the crease after the puck, and I think that's oh, what okay, happened. Right, there he right. is, right there. The puck slid behind Kreber. Teal was standing just off of the crease, skated into the crease, and picked up the loose puck. Here's a good shot of it, isolated on Teal, number 20. There's the puck going behind Kreber. Teal skates into the crease, picks up the loose puck, and scores perfectly legal. And Jeff Teal with his second goal of the game, 14th on the season, and uh, this lead is very quickly becoming insurmountable. Six to one for Minnesota. Third power play goal for Minnesota. You're right. He, the puck was in the area when he went in after it. Teal gets the goal. 10-25. Hartzell and Bart Larson get the assist. Second period. Second goal of the period for Minnesota. They lead it now 6-1. Puck in the Minnesota zone. And Minnesota comes away with it. Minnesota very comfortably in front. 5-1. to one. And I don't think anybody really anticipated this margin in this type of a game. Did I say five? Six one, excuse me. Losing track, it's going up so fast. They they want them all, Joe. Don't. <laughs> well, a jam-packed Duluth Arena. And it has been sold out for some time, and the folks in Duluth have really hosted themselves a fine NCAA event, and they have enjoyed it, and uh, they have done just an excellent job of it here in the Duluth, Minnesota area. They love their hockey. Home of the University of Minnesota, Duluth Bulldogs. Puck in the Michigan Tech zone. Zook with it. Zook back at his own goal. Ron Zook. Long pass by Zook, deflected at center ice by Terwilliger for Minnesota, and he drives it right back into the Michigan Tech zone. Tech with very few offensive flurries thus far in the Minnesota end. They just have not been able to function consistently offensively in this game as Minnesota has just dominated from the opening moments on. Buck in the Michigan Tech zone. Gilmquist with it. And moves it out to center ice. Long pass again. Knocked down by Minnesota as they're just picking off everything Michigan Tech fires right now. Frosting. Checked by O'Connor, but Erickson there to carry on for Minnesota. Trying to put it in front for Broughton. He was held up, and the puck goes to the far corner. Larson dumps it back at the goal. And there to pick it up for Michigan Tech is O'Connor. Eight minutes remaining in the second period. Only goals of the period scored by Minnesota. Erickson trying to put it in front. It's cleared away, and Zook comes away with it for the Huskies of Michigan Tech. Check the center ice. He goes down. This is Bart Larson for Minnesota. Michigan Tech on a line change. Puck driven into the Michigan Tech end. That brings an icing call. They'll move it back down into the Minnesota zone for the faceoff with 7.43 remaining here in the second period of play. WCT Tennis comes your way from Milan, Italy here on ESPN. The semifinals Monday, March 30th at 8 Eastern Time, 5 Pacific. The finals on Tuesday, March 31st, 4 p.m. Eastern Time and 1 p.m. Pacific. Roscoe Tanner, John McEnroe, and others all here on your Total Sports Network. At Eyewitness ESPN. News, we're in touch. In touch with news, weather, and sports. For complete, comprehensive, and up-to-the-minute news... Okay. Center ice picked up by Bukestead. He's got a man with him. Shoots. Kreber saves. Bukestead had a man with him on his right. He had Doshin but couldn't get the puck over to him. At center ice, Kanoki picks it up, trying to get it back to Teal. It's picked off instead by Mikulich for Michigan Tech. His drop pass intended for Terry. Teal cannot clear it out. Terry has it for the Huskies. Terry near corner. Checked by Teal. They trap it up along the boards and another faceoff coming up. Jeff or uh, Jeff Teal. Brings the face off for Minnesota and Tom Meese 
Uh, you have a different angle than we do up here, but it appears that right now that Minnesota just completely dominating play. Uh, the Golden Gophers are like a boulder rolling downhill, Joe. They're completely dominating play. Michigan Tech can't afford to make any more mistakes if they have any hope at all coming back. You may recall that Minnesota, the last two times they played in this building in the regular season against Minnesota Duluth, the Gophers were beaten. This by far their best performance in Duluth, Minnesota this season. Minnesota has outshot Michigan Tech thus far in the game, 27 to 11, and they lead on the board, 6-1. Tech coming very close there, but Butters turns it away. Puck still in the Minnesota zone. Now the Gophers clear to center ice. Picked off by Yelmquist for Michigan Tech, and he dumps it right back into the Minnesota end. Meadows. Peralta fails to clear it out. Palkovich there to hold it in, and Meadows knocks it down. And we've got a penalty coming up. I believe it will go against Neil Broughton. Broughton calls for tripping. So Minnesota will operate shorthanded and give Michigan Tech a chance to get back on the board with the power play. They are 0 for 3 in that department so far in the game. Here's the look at the penalty coming up to Neil Broughton. He doesn't do too many things wrong, but uh, there's a little skate trip right there, and he will serve two minutes. For Minnesota, give Michigan Tech an opportunity on the power play, and they very badly need a goal right here if they have any hope whatsoever of getting back in the hockey game. They need to score here and get a couple more before the period's over. Fifth penalty of the game on Minnesota. Fourth power play opportunity for Michigan Tech. As I said, they are 0 for 3 in power plays thus far in the game. Waters with it. Drops it off on the side, and it's cleared away. Good defensive play by Kenoki as he took it right off the end of the stick of Peroki Johansson in the center ice area. Minnesota controlling it. Kenoki with it. Off the boards into the tech zone, and Terry has to go pick it up for the Huskies. He's turned back by Brad Doshin. Terry feeds it up to Johansson, who clears it out to center ice. The pass was behind Bain, and Doshin has it for Minnesota. Right back into the Michigan Tech end. And Bain hammered Doshin into the board. 1.15 remaining in the penalty time to Neil Brutton. 5.55 remaining in the second period. Minnesota leading at 6-1. Waters having problems. Bain now gets it over to Terry. Crowd very, very quiet. There's another one of those wild hops off those boards back of that goal to our right, Bill. Those things are really live. Cost Michigan Tech a goal earlier in the game. This is Bain along the near boards. Trying to get it out to Waters. He can't. He loses it as Terwilliger took it off his stick for Minnesota. Terwilliger trying to feed it over to Hartzell, and it's picked off now by Waters. Waters feeds it out to Terry with 35 seconds remaining in Broughton's penalty. Now Terry moving in. Bergloff trying to cut him off, hauls him down. Minnesota's going to be two men short. So a big opportunity here for the Huskies as Bergloff will go. Not much doubt about that one. Terry got around him, and the big Minnesota defenseman hauled him down. So he'll join Neil Broughton in the penalty box. 24 in the white, minor penalty for tripping. Now here's a look at Bergloff uh, on the trip on Bill Terry, the freshman from Scarborough, Ontario. Again, no question about it. Very well officiated game, and uh, Michigan Tech will have a two-man advantage. Bill Terry, uh, just a freshman, as I mentioned, uh, Coach John McGinnis feels that he is perhaps the best freshman in the WCHA this season. Makes a good move, gets around Bergloff. The only thing he could do was trip him up to prevent him from cutting in front of the net. Minnesota now will have a two-man disadvantage. Michigan Tech on the power play. 29 seconds in the two-man power play for Michigan Tech. See if they can convert on it. They have an excellent chance to really cut into that Minnesota lead right here. If they can, Butters makes the save. Zook was there trying to pick up a rebound if he could. Now Wiley struggling out in front with Meadows. Is Minnesota trying to keep that area in front of the goal clear if they can. Luke trying to pick it off Butters' pads, and that brought the wrap of the Gophers down on the Huskies. 21 seconds remaining in the penalty time for Neil Broughton, and then Tech will have a one-man advantage, but Bill, they have an opportunity right now to virtually cut that Minnesota lead in half if they can get on the board a couple of times on this two-man advantage. Well, 15 minutes of play gone in the second period. That's really the first difficult save that uh, Butters has had to make in the period. Buck cleared, but not out. Held in by Yelmquist. Yelmquist moving up the pipe. Drops it off on the side. Gets it over to Lowen. 
Lowen with it. Nine seconds left in Broughton's penalty time. They score. Lowen. And that will just bring Broughton back on the ice. So they score with seven seconds remaining in Broughton's penalty. That makes it 6-2 as Lowen gets the goal. Mike Lowen, the sophomore from Medina, Minnesota. I think he scores the goal. He had a teammate right down there close, but I think uh, the shot got cleanly by Butters. We'll wait for the official scoring on it. If it was Lowen, it was his 24th goal of the season. It is a power play goal. It just brings the one Minnesota player back, so they will still be shorthanded for a minute and 38 seconds. As you mentioned, Joe, another goal here in the power play would cut that 6-1 lead. Now 6-2 would cut it in half and uh, perhaps give Michigan Tech the momentum they need to get back in the hockey game. Lowen from Logan Soul and Yelmquist at 15-12 uh, of the period. And it is now a 6-2 game, a power play goal, first and four attempts for Michigan Tech. And they remain on that power play as Bergloff still has another minute and 38 seconds remaining in the penalty situation. But now it's a five-on-four situation instead of a five-on-three power play for Michigan Tech. Now the Huskies back at center ice. Here's Logan Soul trying to go around Meadows. Logan Soul turning on the afterburners. Couldn't get clear. His pass knocked down. And again, Minnesota picks it right off the stick of one of the Husky players and tears it down the ice. And Goshen did the job this time for Minnesota. At center ice, Minnesota again intercepts. And this time, Jeff Teal drives it back into the Husky zone. Just a minute remaining in Bergloff's penalty time. Now Michigan Tech into the Minnesota zone. Hustling over his Meadows. Fails to clear it out as Lowen holds it in at the right point. Lowen steers it over to Yelmquist. Reflected and it just crosses the blue line. Tech will have to get back on side. 42 seconds remaining now in the penalty time for Bergloff. And the faceoff coming outside of the Minnesota blue line with 3.52 remaining in the second period and Minnesota holding a 6-2 lead but Michigan Tech on the power play. So Michigan Tech just not sharp on that particular play. Lowen moved the puck over to... Uh, uh, Yelmquist and he delayed just momentarily just long enough for the Minnesota player to get his stick on the puck get it outside the blue line and uh, we have a face off instead of a scoring opportunity in the Minnesota zone we've got a face off outside the Minnesota blue line Michigan Tech just uh, a little bit hesitant and not reacting fairly quickly enough face off again outside the Minnesota blue line and Minnesota controls the draw but waters in to pick it up for Michigan Tech trying to put it in front Tried to get it up to Mikulich. It's picked off by Baim and had it slide off his stick of drive. Hits traffic is down in front of Hartzell. Backhand shot. That hits traffic off the stick of Terry. And Minnesota clears it back down into the Michigan Tech end. Good offensive flurry for the Huskies, but they come away empty on it. And now 20 seconds remaining in Bergloss penalty time. Tech still on the power play. They're still down by four and need another one to get back into it here. Freebus steers it away from the Minnesota player. Hartzell, and it's picked off by Waters with just five seconds left in Bergloff's penalty time, and Terry sets sail for the Minnesota end, runs into a solid check by Meadows. Aaron Broughton back to pick up the puck. He'll kill it if he can as Bergloff's penalty time expires. Minnesota is back at full strength, so they give up one goal on a two-man short situation and then skate off the rest of the Michigan Tech power play. 3.06 remaining in the period. Minnesota leads it 6-2. Very intelligent play by Aaron Broughton, Joe, number 10, uh, in the corner tied up the puck, took the face off, paid for it, took a couple of good shots from the Tech players, but that's what makes a good hockey player, a guy that'll go in the corner and will take his shots and uh, still come out for the face off, tied the puck up, did his job. Tickets at a premium here in Duluth area. The three games of the championship round have been sold out for several months, and a lot of folks looking for tickets, and we have a jam-packed full house here in Duluth for this one. Minnesota against Michigan Tech. Same will be true for the second game of the series. You'll see all of the action right here on ESPN. Larson in his own zone for Minnesota got away from Pearson. Clears it, but not out as it's held in by Palpovic. Puts it towards goal, and Butters comes right between two players, picks it off and hangs on to it, and then has time to exchange a few pleasantries with Ward Sparrow of the Huskies. 2.45 remaining in the second period. Larson should have cleared the puck out of the zone. Did not get the puck out. And Butters has to come up with a pretty good save. The puck was up high, but uh, very often the puck will bounce off the goaltender in that situation. Uh, 
Well, we had uh, the other team an opportunity for a rebound. Had a few exchange of words going on between, I believe, it's uh, David Jensen of Minnesota and uh, Jim Bissett Two minutes each of for uh, Michigan Tech. They have both gone. Maybe unsportsmanlike contact. They were both yapping over there on the side of the face-off circle. We'll see what the officials will call. Slashing, okay? They were going at each other. Bissett for Michigan Tech and Larson for Minnesota. Both go. And both teams will operate with four skaters at the present time. They're both gone for the next two minutes. And neither team operating shorthanded, just a four-on-four four situation. Buck in the Minnesota zone. Larson goes in along with Logan Soule. Pearson comes in, picks it out, and Butter puts that off the end of Pearson's stick. Now back of the goal is Sparrow trying to jam at home. Erickson there to cover up for Minnesota. And now Aaron Broughton slides it out to center right. Palkovich has it. Steers it over for Mel Pearson. Pearson on the left side for Palkovic. Bergloff back to try to cut him off. Palkovic puts it in front. But the Eric's in there. And he starts Aaron Broughton up the right side. Broughton waiting for help to arrive. Dumps it in for Erickson. Erickson has nobody to pass to. Erickson for Aaron Broughton a little too far. And it's picked off now by Stiles. Stiles with it for Michigan Tech. 1.45 remaining in the period. 57 seconds remaining in the penalty times to Bissett and Larson. Styles with it for the Huskies of Tech. They're down by four. Time running out here in the second period. Also picks up the loose puck for Minnesota. Trying to slide it to the man coming down the shoot. That was Neil Broughton, but it's picked off instead by Lokensall. Now Larson for Minnesota drives the shot, and Kreber kicks that out of there. Palkovich checked from behind by Neil Broughton. Palkovich and Broughton. Palkovich lost his stick. Broughton comes away with it. Dumps it out front for Alsip. Couldn't control it. Neil Broughton has it. And has it knocked away by Lowen. Bart Larson now for Minnesota. Larson feeds it over to Olsen. Olsen, that band on the shot. He is dumped. Going to have a penalty to Styles. And I guess you have to call that a good penalty, Bill, if there is such a thing, because uh, Olsen had gotten behind Styles and he just pulled his legs right out from underneath him. Well, Bart Larson with Yellow a good lead to Olsen. Uh, Styles drags him down from behind the official right there. Styles leads the team in penalties and uh, will tack on a couple more to that statistic right here. There's a good look at it. Hooking the call. 1901, the time. Not so sure that was a penalty. I think he uh, knocked him a little bit from the side and uh, also went off balance and spun around uh, from behind and made it look more like a penalty than it really was. But in any case, Styles will serve a two-minute penalty and not exactly what uh, Michigan Tech needs at this point. Well, we'll give Styles two of the penalty box and uh, give Olsip an eight on the dive, all right? Or a fast. 6.2. Let's give him that, all right? Puck along to their boards and Tech flares it out to center ice. Right. They drive it back into the Minnesota end. This is Mike Kenoki with it. 47 seconds remaining in the period. Minnesota on the power play now. Four on three. Now make it five on four as, as Bissett and Larson come back on the ice for their teams respectively. Aaron Broughton back at the goal for Olsen. Back for Aaron Broughton. Far corner. Broughton slides it out to brother Neal. 30 seconds left in the period. Neal Broughton the drive. Olsen backhand shot. Kreber glove save. Brings the whistle. Face off coming up with 26 seconds remaining in the period. The face-off will be to the right of Frank Kreber. 127, the penalty time remaining in Styles hooking infraction. So if Minnesota does not score in the remaining 26 seconds of the period, they will be on the power play for 101 of the third period. Draw controlled by Minnesota. They slide it out to Neil Broughton. Far side, they go to Kenoki with it. Kenoki fakes the shot, dumped it behind Olsen. Yelmquist failed to clear it out. Kenoki holds it in. Also trying to put it in front. Aaron Broughton couldn't get the stick on it. It's cleared down the ice by O'Connor for Michigan Tech. Just seven seconds left in the period, and that should kill off the remaining time. Long pass for Olsen. Too far. O'Connor clears the center. Buzzer sounds, and that is the end of the second period with Minnesota. Holding a 6-2 lead very quickly. The scoring 
for Minnesota. Hartzell at 51 seconds of the period to boost the margin to 5-1. to one. Minnesota made it 6-1 to one on a power play goal by Teal at 10-25 of the period. Lowen made it 6-2 for Michigan Tech with a power play goal at 15-12 of the period. Minnesota out shooting Michigan Tech in that period 15 to 7 same margin they had in the first period so it's 30 to 14 for the game in favor of Minnesota and shot 6 to 2 on the scoreboard at the end of the second period we'll have more hockey when we return to the Duluth Arena music that's what KS95 FM is all about number one stereo music Music and minute-by-minute minute changes in weather. And you can expect a whole Music and weather and a whole lot of fun. You just won KS95 FM's cash call. Bell fans, we won! We won! KS95 FM, the most listened to music station. Under the sun. Planning for the future is very important. Let's see what these kids want to be when they grow up. What's your name, lad? Fran. And what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a quarterback. A quarterback. And what's your name, son? Bud, and I want to be a football coach. Good. And who are you, son? My name's Bobby, sir. And what do you want to be when you grow up? Well, somebody's going to have to tell these guys where to save. <laughs> Poppin' Fresh brings you the pie sneakers. It seems that no matter how delicious we make our food at Poppin' Fresh, some people just can't wait to get to our pies. Poppin' Fresh restaurants. Never has it been so hard to wait for dessert. Try our newest entree, chili pie, now at Poppin' Fresh restaurants. automotive standard has been set in Burnsville. The distinctive Fletcher Buick Fiat. Come out this weekend. Look over the fine lines of the Buick Century. Elegant styling. Reasonable price. Plus a $500 rebate. Or receive up to $1,000 from Fiat on a car with looks that make heads turn. Fletcher Buick Fiat. Exit Crystal Lake Road on I-35 just south of the Burnsville Center. We'll show you the future and a sharp pencil. Minnesota Golden Gophers continue to dominate action here in semifinal game one in Duluth, Minnesota. The score after two periods of play, the Golden Gophers of Minnesota six and the Huskies of Michigan Tech two. Hello again, everyone. I'm Tom Meese. We'll return to third period action in a few moments. Right now, let's take a few moments to describe to you how the collegiate hockey season of 1980-81 has led up to this point, the final four in Duluth, Minnesota. Let's start, first of all, in the eastern part of the country. There are no eastern teams represented in the final four. However, it was a great season anyway in the Eastern Collegiate Athletic Conference. The ECAC is divided basically into three different divisions. There is the Eastern region in which Boston College dominated, followed by Northeastern, Maine, Providence, New Hampshire, and Boston. You all their season's records. Then we have the Western region of the ECAC. Clarkson, considered by many one of the top teams in the country, and certainly the top team in the East, were upset in the playoffs. Colgate, RPI, St. Lawrence, and Vermont round out that region. And of course, the Ivy League contingent. Cornell won the Ivy League, and that uh, got them a spot in the ECAC playoffs. The Big Red of Cornell later on, of course, were defeated. Defeated. As far as the playoffs go, here's what happened in the ECAC playoffs. In the first round, Providence over BC, Clarkson down New Hampshire, Colgate over Northeastern, Cornell over Maine. The semifinals at the Boston Garden saw Providence beat Clarkson by a goal, and Cornell also by a goal over Colgate. And in the final, the Providence Friars over the Big Red of Cornell by a score of 8-4. to four. Let's move on now to the scoring leaders from the ECAC. Cleaver of Clarkson is the three-point winner in the scoring race over Frigian of Colgate, followed by Conn of Maine, Beadle of Northeastern, Brickley of New Hampshire, and Forget also of New Hampshire. In the goal scoring, or the goal tending statistics, Sylvester of Clarkson with a brilliant 2.80 goals against, followed closely by Bob O'Connor of Boston College. As far as the Western Collegiate Hockey Association goes, let's take a look at the WCHA final standings from the regular season. Minnesota, of course, the regular season victor followed in order by Wisconsin, Michigan Tech, Denver, and North Dakota, and the final five teams in the regular season, Michigan, Colorado College, Minnesota Duluth, Notre Dame, and a Michigan State. Taking a look at what happened in the playoffs in the WCHA, Michigan, and these are all two-game series total goals, Michigan defeating Denver U. It was Minnesota winning in total goals over Minnesota Duluth, Michigan Tech
swept North Dakota. Wisconsin and Colorado College in the Bazaar Series. The saw Colorado College win it in total goals, but Wisconsin was later selected for the Final Four tournament. In the semifinals, Minnesota over Colorado in total goals, and Michigan Tech a total goal winner in a two-game set over Michigan. The WCHA scoring leaders, Steve Alseth of Minnesota, 63 points the winner. Aaron Bratton of Minnesota right behind him, followed by Murray of North Dakota, Neil Bratton of Minnesota, Butsy Erickson of Minnesota, Aikens of Colorado College, Sykes of North Dakota, and Lisi of the University of Wisconsin. In the CCHA, the regular season champion, Northern Michigan, they'll be in action tomorrow night on ESPN, followed by Ohio State, Ferris State, Bowling Green, Western Michigan, Lake Superior State of Miami of Ohio. In the playoffs, the semifinals, Bowling Green and Northern Michigan. Northern Michigan, an easy winner in that second game, carrying them on in the playoffs. Ferris State and Ohio State in the two-game total goal series won by Ohio State. And in the CCHA playoff finals, it was Northern Michigan winning by two goals over Ohio State. Scoring leaders in the CCHA, Pyle of Northern Michigan, Bozick of Northern Michigan. You can read on down the line. We're going to have some excellent uh, hockey players in action tomorrow night, as I think you can see by the stats we've been showing you when Northern Michigan takes on the University of Wisconsin. Again, our score after two periods here from the arena in Duluth, Minnesota. Minnesota six and two goals for Michigan Tech University. They have their work cut out for them in the third period. We'll be back with third period action right after this message. Move up your FM dial to WLOL, almost perfect radio. <laughs> 99 and a half FM. I am a woman in love. W L O L FM. Against the wind. W L O L. 99 and a half FM. Almost perfect radio. Like that? Perfect. I'm Tommy Kramer of the Minnesota Vikings. And this is, uh, I'm Scott Studwell. And this is the new 81 Olds Cut List. America's Sweetheart. I thought I was America's sweetheart. It has sweetheart styling outside, sweetheart luxury inside, and sweetheart economy on the road. And that's why Cutlass is the number one selling family car. Right on, Rustler. Klein Olds has all the 81 Cutlass models on hand right now. Klein Olds in Roseville, the kind of place you like to buy a car. Just what is it you do, Studwell? We're back at the Duluth Arena, Rob Lear. Uh, between periods where Minnesota, the Gophers lead Michigan Tech by a score of 6-2. to two. This intermission, we're joined by Notre Dame head hockey coach Lefty Smith. And Lefty, I talked to you yesterday, and I said, who do you think could win this tournament? And you told me? Well, I thought that uh, Michigan Tech could have an excellent chance of winning it, but of course, uh, you certainly can't discount the Gophers, and they're proving themselves out there tonight. Are you a bit surprised, obviously so, to uh, pick Tech going into this one, the way that Minnesota has dominated play here this evening? Well, Minnesota's poor check has taken Tech off its game, and Tech is uh, the only way they're going to have a chance, I think, is to do a little bit of dumping and running and really start putting two men in deep. And uh, they've been a little bit hesitant on that, and uh, this is any time you give those Minnesota forwards a puck and let them start wheeling, you're in trouble. How about Neil Broughton? Oh, not bad, huh? Oh, what a night. <laughs> uh, to say the least. And, of course, uh, I have a special feeling for Stevie also because I think that Stevie really epitomizes everything that you look for. A walk-on, a kid that's got great leadership and just an outstanding young man. Minnesota out shooting Notre Dame, Notre Dame, Notre Dame coach here. Uh, they're out shooting them 32 to 15 after two periods of play. And uh, Lefty, you've got a big time coming up because on Monday it's the All-Star game at the Mets Sports Center back in Bloomington, and you've had a lot to do about getting this organized. Well, that's right, and we think we've got some excellent events coming up uh, during the next few days after the uh, NCAAs. On Sunday and Monday, we're going to have a college hockey fair where the colleges throughout the country will be coming into the decathlon club and setting up, telling about their programs, about their schools and that, and any high school senior Seniors are welcome to come. Then, of course, uh, also at noon on uh, Monday, we'll have the All-American and the All-Star Luncheon at the Decathlon Club. And then, of course, on Monday evening, the All-Star Game at the Met Sports Center, pitting the best in the West against the best in the East. And then, of course, uh, we capped that all off with a, uh, a great tribute uh, to Neil Broughton and to the uh, uh, people uh, with the Hobie Baker Award on Wednesday evening at the Decathlon Club. So we think this just great seven, eight-day period here for college hockey. And we keep prolonging the hockey season. It seems to go on and on. 
Well, isn't that the truth? But, uh, and of course, uh, you know, when you're in a position like we are where you've had 11 one-goal losses, it really gets long. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly so. You know, the Hobie Baker Award, you touched on it. Neil Broughton, of course, getting that award uh, last week. And they keep talking that it's going to be the Heisman, what that stands for in football, what that, that will mean to hockey. And how long before we see, start to uh, feel that association? Well, I think that, uh, you know, there's some kinks that are in the uh, organization as of right now, but you certainly have to take your head off the decathlon club for starting the Hobie Baker. And uh, it's certainly a great tribute. Now, it's going to take a while to develop tradition. You don't develop tradition overnight. But it's going to be a great thing for college hockey, and it's going to mean as much in the years to come as the uh, Heisman and at the Wooden Award uh, mean to football and basketball. And, uh, you know, it's a award for college hockey as well as for the individual. And uh, we just think the publicity in that is great. And uh, we're certainly hopeful that, uh, you know, through the uh, various media, the TV coverage that we're getting throughout the country uh, with college hockey and the pros, the way that they're using the college kids today. We think this is great, and uh, it can't help but make this great game even better. Of course, the Hobie Baker selection is a year process. It starts with scouts from all over the country, different representatives, and of course, uh, the coaches themselves, the selected few, have uh, something to say about it. That's right, and uh, you know, the decathlon people work for a long time setting this up. The coaches uh, make the preliminary vote, and then, of course, they have members of the media, both East and West, as well as coaches East, east and West, that sit on the final committee and make that final decision. Now, naturally, you're always going to have some discussion as to whether or not the perfect person got it, but I certainly don't think that we can second-guess the idea of Neil Broughton in there. Lefty Smith, thank you very much for joining us. We're between periods. Minnesota leads. The Gophers, six. Michigan Tech, two. More from the Duluth Arena when we continue. Interest plus checking. What do you think about it? To find out, Northwestern went outside to talk to Minnesota. Everyone likes this idea of earning interest on checking, and thousands of you have signed up for it. But we found some Minnesotans still had reservations about it. So Northwestern came back and added the kind of features you told us you wanted. Interest plus checking. While it's a new idea at some places, Northwestern banks have added features that make it better and better. Sign up for it. We listen. And we're on your side, Minnesota. When you start counting calories, some of the so-called light beers don't stand up. Michelob Light, 134 calories. Old Milwaukee Light, 120. Stroh Light, 115. Natural Light, 110. Coors Light, 105. But Schmidt Light stands on its own. A 96-calorie light beer that still tastes like beer. Schmidt Light, just 96 calories. Discover how good a light beer can taste. Last spring, localized weather disasters cost certain soybean growers thousands of dollars. It didn't rain in time to make a lot of rain-activated herbicides work. These growers were out the price of the herbicides, and some got lower yields to boot. And that's a shame, because their neighbors who use Treflan got fine weed control. Treflan works, even without timely rain. Can you really afford a failure? Treflan from Alanco. At Red Lobster, a seafood lover doesn't have to wait for the weekend for a little romance. So what if it's the middle of the week? Ah, there you go. If lobster makes you feel like, uh, Saturday night, why not? And shrimp, look at that sauce. Same goes for shrimp. And, oh, crab legs. Now, can you think of a better way to, uh, break up a week? Red Lobster for the seafood. Joe Boyle, Bill Neal, and Tom Meese back here at the Duluth Arena, Duluth, Minnesota, site of the 1981 NCAA Division I Ice Hockey Championships. The University of Minnesota's Golden Gophers leading the Huskies of Michigan Tech 6-2 after two periods of play. Bill, an excellent period again for Minnesota. They have dominated this game just about from start to finish. Let's take a look at the way those goals were scored in that second period. Well, very early in the, the second period, big goal for Minnesota from Kevin Hartzell. Good feed from Teal, 27th goal of the season for Hartzell. There's the pass right there. He deflects the puck by Krieber, takes the rebound off the goal post. Again, a wide open net. Krieber has not have a, had an awful lot of help in this hockey game. Uh, Hartzell, as I mentioned, his 27th goal. Teal and Bergloff on the assist. That just 51 seconds into the second period. Okay, that, of course, at the time made the score 5-1 to one in favor of Minnesota. There you see the time and the assist, Teal and Bergloff. 
And when we talk about Jeff Teal, uh, he was the man that came up with the next goal to make it 6-1 to one for Minnesota. And, Bill, you might explain that, as you did at the time, that he was in the crease, but he was there legitimately. Well, he was. Once again, the power play. We'll get a chance in slow motion here. Bart Larson with the shot from the point. Kreber makes the save, but you can see uh, Teal Park behind him. The puck slid into the crease before Teal went into the crease. He went in after the puck, backhanded it behind Kreber for his 15th goal of the season, the third power play goal of the game. Larson Hartzell on the assist at 10:25. At that point, uh, Minnesota up six to one. Well, Michigan Tech's goal in the second period it came late. It came on the power play, their first power play conversion. Another power play goal, the fourth of the game, three, of course, by Minnesota. And this on a five-on-three advantage. Lowen just simply swings out into the slot area, takes the shot. Butters saw it all the way, but he just simply beat him to the right of Butters. Lowen on the goal. That was his 24th of the season. Loken Sol and Yelmquist on the assist, 15-12 of the second period. So at least if uh, we can say one thing for Michigan Tech, they did get the last goal. Hopefully for them, it'll give them the momentum they, the momentum they need going into the the third period but they've got a long hard climb back if they expect to get back in the hockey game okay bill very quickly we're just about ready to get underway with play uh I want to ask you one one question, and that's the fact that we talked about the the uh, size of this rink prior to the start of the game. It does not appear to have affected Minnesota a great deal. About this and. Uh, before the game, and uh, they really downplayed uh, this this uh, whole discussion on the size of the rink. As we mentioned earlier, a Minnesota rink some 20 feet longer than the rink here in Duluth, and uh, a lot of talk that that would play into the hands of Michigan Tech playing a more physical kind of a game as opposed to the Minnesota team playing a very uh, uh, passing, skating kind of a game, and uh, they are certainly playing that game, Minnesota, and playing it very, very well, and on top 6-2, to two, and uh, very much in command of the hockey game. So as we talk about this, uh, again, both coaches downplayed the rink and uh, neither felt it would be that big a factor. Bill, we talked, uh, you and I, between the periods. And as a former coach, your team is down 6-2 to two going into the final period of play in what right now looms as your last period of championship competition this year. Uh, Four goals is a bunch, especially against a team like Minnesota. What do you tell them? Well, the thing that uh, Michigan Tech has to do is uh, take uh, chances. That's all they can do at this point in time. Uh, you see there the titles, NCAA crowns, Minnesota having won three of them, and Michigan Tech four. Puck comes into the Minnesota zone. As I mentioned, Joe, Tech will have to take chances right away. They've got to score early and get back in the game. Minnesota on the power play as we start the third period with Styles in the penalty box for another 42 seconds. Buck comes back to center ice, picked up by Bissett. Bissett drives the shot, and Butter's there to make the save. It's cleared away from in front. Yelmquist drives it back at the goal. Minnesota on the power play, but Michigan Tech penetrating right now in the Minnesota end. Trying to get the face off in the gopher zone if they can. Olsen clears it away. Now taken to the boards by Sparrow. He'll try to tie it up. It's dug out, and Kenoki comes away with it for Minnesota with 20 seconds left in the gopher power play. Styles will be back on the ice now in 15 seconds as Kenoki heads to center ice. I guess the converse problem, Bill, would be as Kenoki drives a shot and Cleaver slides over through a lot of traffic and picked it up and got the pad on it. The converse problem would be for Brad Buto, the Minnesota coach, with his team up 6-2 to two by four goals. Styles is back on. Michigan Tech uh, back at full strength. But the converse problem would be to keep his team as active as they have been through the first two periods. Well, certainly they do not want to sit back and just uh, try and protect the lead. Uh, because uh, goals can come in bunches in college hockey, and uh, Michigan Tech, with a couple of goals, would uh, narrow the gap, but more so it would give them the momentum, and once the momentum shifts, anything is liable to happen in this game, and uh, so absolutely, Minnesota wants to continue to play the kind of game that's uh, gotten them this big of a lead. Our statisticians have come up with an interesting statistic. The last time Michigan Tech allowed this many goals in a game was 11 games ago, and they lost that to guess who? The University of Minnesota, 8-3. to three. So Minnesota appears at least at this stage. Now a quick break by Mikulich, and he fired it over the top of the goal as he split the defense. 
and got the quick shot off but fired it over the top of the goal. The two teams with the puck along the boards, they tie it up. We'll have a face-off coming up. This is actually the fourth meeting between these two clubs this year. They met in a Hall of Fame game in Eveleth, Minnesota, that uh, Michigan Tech does not have on their record, but Minnesota won it, so they have it on their <laughs> record. <laughs> As your shots on goal at this stage in the game, 32 for Minnesota, 15 for Michigan Tech. Then in the first meeting up at Michigan Tech, Tech came away the winner as Mike Lowen got the hat trick for the Huskies, but Minnesota bounced back to win the next game 8-3, to three, and that was the last time anybody scored that many goals on Michigan Tech. Right now, Minnesota leads at 6-2 as we have 18-23 to go here in the first period. Butters came out and uh, tried to cover up the puck, but it slid loose, or, and uh, a whistle stopped play anyway as the referee lost sight of the puck. Now, of course, a long history between these two teams dating back in the 1921-22 season. Minnesota leads the series 98-61. to There have been seven ties. And I'll tell you, there have been some wars between these really clubs have. over the years. They really have. Buck comes back into the Michigan Tech zone. Palkovich, checked from behind, loses the puck, picked up by Minnesota. They try to put it out front, but there to pick it off is Terry for the Huskies of Michigan Tech. Two men back for the Gophers. Terry leaves them standing, moves in, puts it in front, but Butters came out and falls on top of the puck. Good move by the Minnesota netminder as he came way out and just got a glove on the puck to knock it down as Terry tried to feed it out in front to one of his teammates, but Butters knocked it down and then fell on top of the puck. Well, Butters plays this very well. The good, good freshman, Bill Terry, makes a good move. The Minnesota defenseman falls down right here, but uh, Tech has got to start shooting on those situations. Uh, Bill Terry off to the right of Butters, and uh, he's just got to start to shoot the puck, take some chances, hope they can uh, maybe get a fluke goal or two here in the back of the hockey game. 17.56 remaining in the third period. Faceoff comes in the Minnesota zone. Jensen along the far boards. Now it's a Williger in there. Again, they tie it up, and again, we will have a faceoff. The winner of this game will move to the championship game, which will be played Saturday night in this building. The winner will meet the winner of the game between the University of Wisconsin Badgers and the Wildcats of Northern Michigan. Puck in the Minnesota zone. Tech puts it in front, but Meadows is there to pick it off. His pass caroms off Langevin's back. Langevin manages to clear it out the center ice and then drive it back into the Tech end. Sir Williger trying to hold it in. Battle for the loose puck. Larson couldn't hold on to it. Now Meadows drives it back into the Tech zone again and then collides with Waters. Back of the goal. Stiles trying to pick up the puck. Minnesota steals it. They drop it in front, but nothing there but gold jerseys, and Tech comes away with it. Stiles loses it to Langevin. And now it's picked up by Zook, and he drives it into the Minnesota zone. Butters leaves it for Jensen. David Jensen, just a sophomore. Already been drafted. Moves out to center ice and then fires it down into the Michigan Tech zone again. Krieger leaves it beside the goal for Stiles. Stolen, picked up by Minnesota again. Now Stiles after it as he pulls it away from Larson. And the puck cleared out to center ice where Dillon has it for Minnesota. Feeds it over to Bergloff. Brad Buto, the Minnesota coach, using a fourth line extensively here in the third period. With 16-39 remaining, we get the offside call and a faceoff coming up outside of the Michigan Tech blue line. Still 6-2, the University of Minnesota leads it. Along the near boards, the Huskies pick it up. O'Connor after it. He's checked from behind by Neil Broughton. Also drives it back to the corner, and O'Connor wheels back to pick it up for the Huskies. Around the boards, it's picked up by Yelmquist. He loses it to Hartzell, who lost his stick. And O'Connor has it now for Michigan Tech. The pass comes to Bame at center ice. Neil Broughton there to break that up. O'Connor at his own blue line. Feeds it up for Bame, who tips it in. And in pursuit, Johansson. He goes in along with Dillon. Centering pass out front. Neil Broughton there to clear it to the near corner. Bame along the near board. They feed it out front. O'Connor takes the shot. Butters kicks it out. It just went past the outstretched stick of Johansson. O'Connor at center ice for Michigan Tech. Picked up by Schwartz. Schwartz. 
Bergloff now drives it down the ice. Minnesota trying to reach the finals for the eighth time in nine trips to this event. Well, speaking of the NCAA title game, I want to remind you that we'll be at hand live Saturday, March 28th at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 Central and 5 Pacific for all of the action right here on ESPN. Also at Eyewitness News, we're in touch. In touch with news, weather, and sports. For complete, comprehensive, and up-to-the-minute news coverage, see Eyewitness News at 6 and 10. 36 remaining in the period and Minnesota controlling the game 6-2 as they have virtually from the outset. They got on the board at 7-23 have not been headed since that time. This is Jensen with it for Minnesota. Slides it around for Larson. Erickson takes a shot from Palkovich and goes down but slides the puck out to center right. Bissett drives it to the far corner. <laughs> he and Rothstein go in after it. Rustin went down. Larson dumps it off. A shot by Erickson. Kreber got the right shoulder in front of that one and knocked it down. As you point out, Bill Kreber has just not gotten a lot of help from his teammates. And Michigan Tech and any team under John McKinnis is going to be a defensive hockey team. And they are an excellent defensive team. But thus far in this game, they have just not been able to play the type of game they like to play. Erickson there to knock that down. Takes it to the boards. Pearson comes away with it for Tech. As it deflected the far corner, and it's picked up by Wiley. His pass goes all the way back into the tech zone. Back after it is Waters. Tom Mees is down in the ice area, and the full house here in the Duluth Arena has become very, very quiet. Tom, but everybody seems to be hanging around. Well, Please. Joe, the, the crowd is basically for the University of Minnesota Golden Gophers. I think uh, it's mostly a partisan crowd for the Gophers. They seem to be still skating with a lot of spirit, but I think you can. You were talking with Bill Neal about, you know, uh, what does Michigan Tech do this last period? Do they to try and keep their spirits up? Well, they seem to be skating almost uh, on a treadmill. They seem to be going through the motions out there, and right now, they don't hurry up and change things around. Their season has about 14 and a half minutes left. Bill, uh, they're getting back to that subject as the face off comes up now in the tech zone. Uh, do you stay with your game plan if you're a defensive hockey team, or do you maybe pull out the stops and, and uh, go at, at the Gophers and try to play their game with them? Well, they've got to uh, just take all kinds of chances. Now they've got nothing to lose. Down four goals. Obviously, they've got to get some goals and get them quickly. Mikulic with the shot. Butter steers that back at the goal. Bergloff and Mikulic go in along the boards. They tie it up there. And we'll have another faceoff coming up in the Minnesota end with 14.05 remaining here in the third period. Joe Boyle, Bill Neal, and Tom Meade here in the Duluth Arena. So just as Mikulich did on that particular play, took the feed from Terry, took a shot from a bad angle. Butters really didn't have any problem with it, but, but you kind of hope for something you to happen, You hope for right? a bad hop or a kind of a fluke goal to get some momentum, and that's really at this point of the hockey game uh, really the only chance Tech has. Face off to the left of Butters, a Minnesota goaltender. Wiley with a drive. That hits traffic. Caroms to the near side. Quick shot taken by Yelmquist. And that goes up into the crowd. We'll have a face off coming up. Tech is outshot in Minnesota in this period, four to one, but thus far have not been able to put anything up on the board other than the two goals that they had at the end of the second period. 14 minutes remaining in regulation time in this game one of the 1981 NCAA college hockey tournament here from Duluth, Minnesota. Face-off controlled by Tech, but Bertloff comes away with it. Wiley hammers him to the boards. Meadows clears the center ice, takes a shot for hit at his effort. Now Mikulich back to pick up the putt, slides it over to Yelmquist, puts it on Wiley's stick. Lead pass for Terry, and he is double-teamed by Teal and Bertloff and just squashed as he moved into the Minnesota zone. Looks a little bit like the pickle in the middle. He led with his face, as they say. <laughs> <laughs> or something. Dial slides the puck off the boards. It's picked up by Yelmquist, and he motors back into the Minnesota end. Taken out of the play by Dillon, and Teal comes away with the puck. Yelmquist trying to hammer him to the boards. Held in out at the left point by Mikulic, but Kenoki there to pick it up for Minnesota. Kenoki checked off the puck. Return pass comes to Dillon for Minnesota. Both teams changing their units. The puck into the Michigan Tech end. Dillon picks it up for Minnesota again and drives it into the Michigan Tech zone. Time continuing to run down as the Gophers inch closer and closer to the NCAA title game for 1981. Puck out front, a quick shot knocked down to Williger, a shot, and Kreber scrambles out, covers up on top of that, hangs on to it to stop play right there with 12.48 remaining. Right now, 
Minnesota, seven penalties for 14 minutes. Michigan Tech, six penalties for 15. They had the one major for five minutes. A slashing penalty or high sticking penalty by Pearson that drew blood. And uh, that brought a major penalty to Pearson, and that accounts for the differential in penalty time as opposed to the amount of penalties that you see there. Faceoff coming up in the Michigan Tech end to the right of Frank Creaver, the Huskies netminder, controlled by Minnesota's Larson. It goes back of the goal, and it's picked up now by Tech, cleared around the boards, and the Huskies start back to center ice with Ron Zook leading the way. Zook with the return pass, trying to drop it back on the stick of Wilkinsoul. Zook picks it up, backhand shot, butter stays. Another save as he kicked that one out of there, and Minnesota comes away with it. A couple of pretty good saves as Butters tested for the first time since midway through the second period by the Huskies of Michigan Tech. Jensen moves in to pick up the puck for Minnesota. Flies it up for Longevin. He puts it on Larson's stick, and Larson drops it back for Longevin. Longevin a shot. Creaver saves, covers up on the rebound. And Larson checked from behind. Goes down on top of the Michigan Tech netminder. Well, Minnesota really, Bill, when you think about it, over the last eight years, or well, look, look at that last play first. Yeah, once again, Minnesota on the offense, uh, really moving the puck around. Here's the shot initially taken by uh, David Jensen, and watch the shot that he takes from behind right here from uh, Waters. That's what a defenseman is supposed to do, but uh, Tech has not done a lot of it <laughs> throughout this hockey game. Tough around that goal. I say in the last eight years, Minnesota has been to this tournament. This is their fifth trip, and they have come away thus far with three NCAA titles looking for their fourth, and that's really a remarkable record because when you think about it, the personnel of those teams has been virtually different each time in. They have not had a lot of repeaters back on those clubs. Puck into the Minnesota zone. Hartzell banks it off the board. Meadows there to pick it up for Minnesota. Meadows goes down. And we have a whistle. We'll have a penalty coming. Tripping call as Meadows went down. The man that dumped him will spend some time in the box. With 11.35 to go in the period, Minnesota will go on the power play. Yellow minor for tripping. And Bame will spend time in the box for tripping. Now this is the fifth power play of the hockey game for Minnesota, and they have converted on three of four, so they have been very deadly on the power play. 8.25, the time of the tripping penalty on Bame. So Minnesota with the power play. There's the, the trip right there. Not the two men in front of the screen, but at, at the front of your screen, but rather behind them, right by the Minnesota goal. Face off outside of the Minnesota zone, controlled by Michigan Tech as Minnesota on the power play. Tech trying to drive the puck into the Minnesota zone, puts it out of play, and we'll have a face off now in the center ice area. So as you pointed out, Michigan Tech has scored 13 shorthanded goals on the season. At this point in the game, they really need a lift, so uh, perhaps that penalty, if they could get a shorthanded goal, would be uh, work out to their advantage because they need some kind of a lift, something to really get them going, and uh, certainly a shorthanded goal can do that. That. Bill, you talked about Minnesota should not sit back and, and try to sit in that lead, but they really have slowed down uh, considerably here in the third period. Uh, Coach Buto has gone to a fourth line at times, try to get him stirred up. But thus far, the Gophers really haven't done much, and they've been outshot here in the third period, although they have controlled the game up until this time and have it pretty comfortably in hand at this stage. Tech comes away with it in their own zone, 125 remaining in the power play for Minnesota, and they have not had possession of the puck for any extended period of time during this power play. 10.50 remaining in the third period as Neil Broughton steams towards the Michigan Tech zone. Has the puck for Olsen, return pass for Broughton. He's all tied up. Waters trying to clear it out. Cannot pass intended for Erickson out front. That's picked off and cleared back out to center ice. Kenoki moves back into the Michigan Tech zone with it. Checked. He tries to put it in front. Loose puck. Erickson for Neil Button takes the shot. That's deflected by Sparrow and goes back out to center ice. Sparrow in pursuit of Button. Button gets by one man, goes to the backhand, dumps it in front, and there to pick it off was Pelkovich for Michigan Tech. This is Neil Button. Kenoki. Kenoki drives the shot. They score. And it may have been a deflection by Aaron Button in front. 
It's a power play goal. It comes at 9.51, and the Minnesota margin goes to 7-2. To we'll wait to see who gets credit for the goal. Broughton was camped in front. We'll see whether he deflected it. Joe, oh, I think he did. Aaron Broughton was uh, screening goaltender Kreber. I think the puck deflected off his right leg. I think it deflects off his right leg. His leg or a stick, but it did definitely deflect off of uh, Aaron Broughton, his second goal of the game. 45th on the season. Let's watch it again. The shot from the point by Kenoki, the fourth power play goal of the game for Minnesota. Saw the puck change direction. They now lead it 7-2 with under 10 minutes to play in the third period. Second goal of the game for Aaron Broughton. It comes at 9.51 of the period. Kenoki and Neil Broughton get the assist for Neil Broughton. That is his second assist of the game to go with the goal that he has. So the Broughton brothers with six points between them in the game. And Minnesota very comfortably in front, 7-2. And I guess very comfortably is becoming a little bit of a redundant phrase, but that's about the only way you can describe it. They have the game in hand, and with 9.36 to go, it's going to take a miraculous comeback by Michigan Tech to say anything about the final score in this one. Well, Joe, we talked about the importance of Michigan Tech staying out of the penalty box early in the game. and their fourth power play goal? They have spent some time in the penalty box, and Minnesota have converted on four of five power play opportunities. So right now, that's the difference in the hockey game. Seven to two, Minnesota leads it, bidding to become the first entry in the NCAA Finals on Saturday night here in the Duluth Arena. I will say, though, that uh, despite the four power play goals, the way Minnesota has played uh, on the positive side and the way Michigan Tech has played on the negative side, I don't think it would make an awful lot of difference. I think Minnesota has dominated the game in every aspect. Well, there's the Michigan Tech bench. Well, I want to remind you that ESPN has a basketball sketch special coming your way. The uh, program titled Then There Were Two, and that is... At Eyewitness News, we're in touch. In touch with news, weather, and sports. For complete, comprehensive, and up-to-the-minute news coverage, see Eyewitness News at 6 and 10. being done on the ice here in the Duluth Arena. Winner of this game will move into the final game and they will meet the winner of the competition in game number two between the University of Wisconsin Badgers, the Wildcats of Northern Michigan. It is very warm in here, Bill, as uh, you and I were commenting earlier. Our, our producer just pointed out to us, extremely warm in the building and there have been some problems with the ice earlier, but... Uh, Certainly hasn't slowed Minnesota down an awful lot. Minnesota led 4-1 to one at the end of the first period, 6-2 to two at the end of the second. They've increased their margin to 7-2 to two with 9.36 remaining in this one. Gophers have been just outstanding. And right now, they have some time in the penalty box for a member of the Maroon and Gold. And moving over there will be Scott Bugstad. Four in the yellow on a slash. More from New Brighton, Minnesota. 27 over here on a cross check. Cross check, 27 white, slash, well, number four two yellow. Bands, not just one. As going for Michigan Tech is Dennis Yelmquist, the senior from Bernamo, Sweden. Cross checking the call on Bugstead and slashing on Yelmquist. So both go at 10-27 of the period. And a four-on-four four situation for both teams. Michigan Tech back. Lowen with the drive, and there's one of those crazy bounces off the boards back of the goal here, and it came right back into the crease area. Butters fell on top of it and very alertly did not go in pursuit of the puck back of the goal as his namesake at the far end of the rink, Frank Krieber did earlier, and it cost Krieber a goal. Michigan Tech for 
All right. Tom Meese down at ice level. Let's go down to him. Well, Joe, for those who like to keep records, Aaron Broughton with his performance tonight now has amassed 104 total points on the season. That is just five away from a brand new NCAA record. The record, of course, is held by Taylor of North Dakota. He played with the national champions last year. He's now in the American Hockey League. The puck in the center ice area picked up by the Huskies of Michigan Tech. Nine minutes remaining in the third period. Minnesota up 7-2 to two in semifinal round action in the NCAA Hockey Tournament for 1981. Division I play. Lowen for Michigan Tech. As his pass stolen away by Minnesota, Jensen pumped it into the Tech zone, but the Huskies tear it back out. And Logan Soul comes up the left wing. He and Meadows collide. Meadows comes away with the puck. Lowen cut in front of him, but Meadows has the puck for Minnesota. And Bill, Minnesota has really been outside of some checking along the board. The more aggressive of the two teams in, as far as pursuing the loose puck, much more so. Yeah, they really have. They played very sound defensive hockey as well as scoring the goal. Quick shot fired wide to the right. Waters has it for Tech now. Back at the goal. Meadows has him all tied up. Dumped it out in front, but Butter's got a stick on that. Neal or Teal comes away with it. Tried to get you back into the uniform. Teal with it out in center ice. Waters takes it away and dumps it back into the Minnesota zone. 35 seconds remaining in the penalties to Bugstead and Yelmquist. Kenoki back of his own net. Into the Michigan Tech zone. Also for Hartzell. Hartzell has a man coming up the slot. Bergloff, he panned on it. You can see Bergloff creeping up the slot. Hartzell fed him, and Bergloff pulled the trigger just a little too soon and missed everything. Came up with nothing but air. Olsen drops it back in for Hartzell now. Just eight seconds left in the penalties to Bugquist, or Bugstead and Yelmquist. And then both teams will be back at full strength again. Bain from Michigan Tech drops it back for Stiles. Stiles with Hartzell out in front. Motors his way up ice and just rolled right over Aaron Broughton and leveled him in the center ice area. But comes back into the Michigan Tech zone with 7.20 remaining. Both teams are back at full strength now. Kenoki up to pick up the puck. Drives it back into the Tech zone. Here's Aaron Broughton in pursuit. Styles after Broughton. Broughton finally loses it. It's picked up by Johansson. Still in the Michigan Tech zone. Now Johansson clears out the center. Gets by one man. Along the far boards. Has it knocked off the end of his stick. Pearson dug it out, but Minnesota clears it back down into the Tech end. This is one of those nights you just as soon forget as a coach, wouldn't you, Bill, if you're back at the Michigan <laughs> Tech bench? They have not done an awful lot right in this game, but again, Minnesota has played awfully well. They've just not allowed Michigan Tech to play their game. Here's Mel Pearson moving in for the Husky. Pearson, going to put it in front. Off the stick of Dillon. Shot butter. Now to scoop it up. And he hangs on to it as he just scoops it off the ice like a baseball infielder would and hung on to it. That's all, uh, history tends to repeat itself or turn about as fair play, however you want to say it. The last time we had such a left-sided score in the NCAA playoffs at either a semifinal game or a championship game was back in the 1975 tournament. That involved these two teams, but Michigan Tech won that one six to one. So Minnesota getting a little bit of uh, sweet revenge here tonight <laughs> in Duluth. I'm going to say, uh, too, Bill, that a little uh, strange quirk of fate. In 1974, when these two teams met, Michigan Tech had won the Western Collegiate Hockey Association title, and Minnesota came away with the NCAA crown in the NCAA playoffs. The next year, in 1975, Minnesota won the Western Collegiate Hockey Association crown, only to have Michigan Tech come away with the NCAA title. The following year, 1976, Michigan Tech again won the McNaughton Cup, the WCHA crown, and it was Minnesota that came back with the NCAA title. This year, Minnesota won the WCHA title, so if that tradition were to continue, Michigan Tech would, in fact, defeat Minnesota tonight, but that's not the case. Minnesota leading on the scoreboard 7-2 with 5.54 to go, so fate has not intervened, at least at this point in the game. Puck comes back into the Michigan Tech zone, and Yelmquist banks it off the boards. Neil Broughton there to hold it in, and we've got a penalty coming up as pretty good swipe taking, taking Ed Broughton by Bissett. Broughton's going to go, too. So Broughton will go, and Bissett will go. Broughton. Yammering with Charlie Holden. Let's see what he has to say. Get in the box. Well, 
they'll both go. No, just just Broughton is going. You can't believe this has got away with it. Well, here's a look at it, and I thought the call was on Bissett, but uh, as you did, Joe, but apparently he was uh, now Broughton's pointing the only the finger one at Broughton. But, uh, well, wait a I, minute. I still think Bissett, well, no, that's Beam out there. Yeah, I, Bissett is, I think, I think Bissett has found himself a little spot in the bench to go to hide there for a <laughs> while. Well, here's the shot. I, I don't think there's much question that uh, Broughton got a pretty good shot in initially, but it appears but that Bissett had retaliated. retaliated. Right. And I thought Broughton had gotten away with it, but he did not. Well, the penalty goes against Broughton, so Michigan Tech with the power play. 5.32 remaining in the game. And Minnesota up by five, but Michigan Tech on the power play. Here's Terry back with us. Goes in to get it set up. Feeds it out front. Waters a drive, but he hit the outside of the goal post. He got it by Butters, but it caroms off the outside of the goal post. Waters feeds it over for Teal. Teal with Bergloff trying to turn him away. Drives it to the far corners. Meadows there for Minnesota. Overskates the puck. Bame there to pick it up. Bame for the Huskies of Michigan Tech. Feeds it out to the point to Terry. Over for Waters. Terry with it. Now Waters fires. That's off the shins of Doshin. Skinner's wide. Mikulic drops it back for Bame. Bame feeds it up to Terry. His shot hits Meadows out front. Caroms to the far corner. Meadows having a pushing match out front with Hiroki Johansson. Mikulic dumps it off on the side to Terry. His shot deflected over the top. One minute remaining in the penalty time. Broughton and Michigan Tech looking as effective as they have all night on the power play at this stage of the game as they whipped it around pretty good in the Minnesota zone and they've got some pretty good shots on Butters but he's turned them away. Terry with it. Left point. Yelmquist feeds it over on the far side for Logan Soul. Dumps it back at the goal. Pickwick for Zook. Zook has it back out for Terry. Terry. Back for Zook. On Zook. Takes the shot. Meadows deflects that. 25 seconds remaining in the power play. And Minnesota really staying in that box very, very well. And they've really not given Michigan Tech much to shoot at, Bill. No, they haven't. Tech throwing the puck around very well, but not getting the good shots in the slot area. Low console. Zook. Check from behind by Terwilliger. Low console with it. Kind of beat it over on the far side. Tried to get it over to Lowen. Lowen got it tangled up in his skates. Couldn't pull it out. Zook back at the goal now for low console. Button is back on. So Minnesota has killed the power play. And the puck goes underneath Zook's stick. He and Jensen jousting out front. Minnesota, meanwhile, controlling the puck. Meadows along the board. And he starts back towards the other end with 3.20 remaining in the third period. Minnesota holding on to their 7-2 lead. Cut back in the Michigan Tech zone, and now Lowen, who can really fly. Dylan trying to cut him off. Lowen lost possession of the puck. It's been the story of the game for Tech all night long. Low control out front, right into the skates of Young Twisted Drive, fired high and wide, and Low Control puts it right into the pads of Butters, who was lying prostrate in the goal now. Face off coming up with 2.59 remaining in the third period. 7-2, Minnesota leads it on their way to the NCAA Finals here in Duluth. Yeah, Michigan Tech uh, applying some pressure offensively, but uh, much too little too late, and uh, Logan Soul Park just to the right of Butters gets the rebound, but Paul Butters uh, covers up, and we get a face-off to his right. Joe, not only is Minnesota playing very well in this game, obviously they've dominated and uh, have an excellent team, but the statistics are with them as well. 22 of the 33 previous champions won the Thursday night hockey game. So, oh, uh, oh, that little, little precedence nice little there. Statistic for them to keep in mind as well. Face off to Butters right. Controlled by Tech, they hold it in. Barrow after it, trying to get it to Pearson. Pearson slides it through the crease. Goes to the far side. O'Connor in after it. Pearson along with Dillon. They tie it up along the boards. Larson trying to dig it out. Now Pearson comes away with it. Mel Pearson. Checked by Dillon. Hammered into the boards. And Longevin comes away with it for Minnesota. Longevin. Long shot. Treber handles that easily. Drops it beside the goal. Tech in their own zone. Dillon trying to hold it in at the right point. He is creamed at the blue line. And the puck comes out to center ice. The Williger. Now Longevin. Checked from behind by O'Connor. Goes down. And Pearson comes away with it for Tech. 
Intercepted, Larson a drive, and down in front to block. That was O'Connor. And Saber watched it slide by on the right side, hit the outside of the goal mound. Pearson comes away with it for the Huskies. Slides it up to Sparrow. Sparrow has it knocked off his stick by Dillon. And we had a whistle back up the ice. So we'll have a faceoff coming up with 2.04 remaining. And we have a penalty called oh, against Minnesota. Minor penalty for Russell. So Minnesota, Minnesota will go on the power play with 2.04 remaining. And if they don't score, they'll eat up all but four seconds of the time remaining in the shot. That's a delay from the penalty you got five minutes ago. They just got around to calling it. Roughing the call on Bissett at 1756. Minnesota on the power play once again. So that statistic, 22 of 33 champions winning the Thursday game. Uh, certainly an interesting statistic. Uh, I don't think it's the physical part of the game playing back-to-back -back Friday and Saturday night. I think it's the emotional part. The kids get up so high and they just don't have a chance to relax uh, after the Friday night game. I think that's the reason why the Thursday teams have dominated. Puck in the Minnesota zone. Bergloff trying to slide it over to Harsel. Harsel with Stiles trying to cut him off and he does. Minnesota on the power play. Fame. Franks up the long drive, missed wide on the right by about four feet. Styles in the Minnesota zone. Check now Fame taken into the boards by Larson. They tie it up there, and we'll have another faceoff with 132 remaining in the game. And 128 remaining in the penalty time for Bissett. Minnesota in their last appearance in the NCAA Final Four in 1979. They won that semifinal game 4-3 over the University of New Hampshire, went on to win the national championship with a 4-3 win over the University of North Dakota. North Dakota, of course, won it all last year with a 5-2 win over Northern Michigan. Northern Michigan will play Wisconsin tomorrow night. Puck in the Minnesota zone. Butters sweeps that aside. Well, Butters, the Minnesota netminder, really has not been tested very severely at all tonight, Bill, but uh, he has been there when he's had to be for the most part. And the two tech goals have come on the power play. Here's a long drive, and Saber has that slide up his arm and out of play as Teal fired the shot from out front. Most impressive performance, not only by the Broughtons, who we have spoken a great deal about, but by also Hartzell, Teal, and the entire University of Minnesota hockey team. Defense has played very well, too. They have uh, not given Michigan Tech much of anything throughout the game. Tech, obviously not sharp, but much of their game has been taken away by some fine defensive play, as well as, of course, the scoring up front. Face off in the Tech zone. one twelve remaining in the period and the regulation time in this game. And just one oh six remaining in the penalty time now to Bissett. Minnesota still on the power play. Aaron Broughton drops it back at the goal. Gives that over the puck and Perry comes away with it. Four Michigan Tech with a minute left to go in the game. Perry moves it into the Minnesota end. Minnesota there. And they clear it back out to center. Teal over for Hartford. Drop pass for Teal. Drives the shot down in front to block that with Waters. And the puck slides back out to center ice. Picked up now by Palkovich. Palkovich with Teal after him. They go to the board. Meadows moves in to pick up the puck. Perry takes it away from him with 30 seconds remaining. Perry along the far boards. Minnesota will move to the NCAA championship game Saturday night here in the Duluth Arena. By virtue of their victory over Michigan Tech, and it has been a most convincing one. Outstanding game for the University of Minnesota's Golden Gophers. They will win it 7-2. The only scoring in the third period. A quick drive, and Kreber with the glove save with four seconds remaining. I just about called that one a little too quick when I said the only scoring in the third period, but the only goal thus far in the third period by Aaron Broughton from uh, Mike Kenoki and brother Neil Broughton at 9.51, four minutes out to give them their current 7-2 lead. Have the faceoff coming up in the Michigan Tech zone, and Bill, just an outstanding effort by the University of Minnesota, a very impressive hockey team. Well, they really have. They played their game. They moved the puck around. They took advantage of the penalties. They used the power play, which has served them well all season long and have played very well. Very, deserve very deserving victory for Minnesota. Puck in the Michigan Tech zone. Time runs down. That is it. 
the University of Minnesota's Golden Gophers will go to the championship game. They'll face the winner of the game between Wisconsin and Northern Michigan in that title game Saturday night here in the Duluth Arena. Our final score again, 7-2. to The University of Minnesota defeats the Huskies of Michigan Tech, and Minnesota moves to the championship game. We'll return with Rob Lear and more on tonight's action right after this. Back at the Duluth Arena where the Minnesota Gophers have won the hockey game to advance into Saturday night's championship round. The Gophers over Michigan Tech tonight by a final score of 7-2. to two. Joining me, Athletic Director Paul Giel. What a game. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, I had a feeling talking to Brad Buto and talking to some of the young men before the game that they were ready to play, but all I've been hearing for about two weeks is the way Michigan Tech has been coming on. I have so very much respect for John McInnes. He's won three national championships along the way, and he's been ill, and he's bounced back, and his kids have a lot of respect for him. They've been flying. I don't know, they won, what they win, about 17 out of 19 games? 16 of 19. They won so, their last nine, and many people were predicting, Paul, that Michigan Tech was the team to beat in this tournament. Well, uh... Now that we've beaten them, I'm worried about <laughs> either Northern Michigan or, or Wisconsin. I guess that's how all good fans or athletic directors feel. And once again, Minnesotans, the big key on the Minnesota program, they're all from Minnesota. They all have played close by this hockey arena here in uh, Duluth. They're close to the Twin Cities. They're an all-Minnesota program, something you must be very proud of. Well, I'm very proud of all of our programs, but uh, starting with the Johnny Mariucci's and the San Moors and even Kenny Ackles, an interim coach for us, and then helping me pick a guy like Herbie Brooks and then giving Brad Buto that chance when Herb was away and sticking with the Minnesota kid as much as we possibly can. Uh, uh, I, as Herb Brooks once said, they all know how to sing the Minnesota Rouser, and that helps. It certainly does. The recruiting, the numbers, it seems that those rosters are filled. Uh, they have them standing in line waiting to get in. Well, uh, we've been fortunate with the great hockey that there is in the state of Minnesota. Unfortunately, and I'd like to point this out to some fans, we'll only have, for example, six scholarships to give out. That's all we're losing, you see. And Brad takes one of those scholarships and upgrades some of the other fellows who do not have full scholarships. Some of them only have a half or even a quarter. So um, uh, there's an awful lot of fellows, it seems, that we miss. But you've only got five, really, to give out. Again, the final score is Minnesota 7, Michigan Tech 2. Tonight it was all Minnesota. The dominance of the Gophers played right from the start to the finish. They scored four goals in the first period, and right from that point on, it was all Minnesota. They really, uh, Paul, in, uh, in your impressions of this hockey game, after that first period, 4-1, did you just have the feeling it was all over? Well, I remember being out of Denver when they led us 3 to nothing, and we came back to win the national championship, so I didn't feel it was all over, but I thought the way we were coming, changing our lines, going with four lines, that it is, I hadn't seen Michigan Tech because we played there. But uh, I thought we outquicked them. Uh, I don't know if we outhustled them. I think we had more talent. We want to remind our viewers along the line tonight that on Saturday night now, because the Gophers have won, 7 o'clock championship will be seen here on Channel 5. All the action begins at 7 o'clock. It'll be Minnesota. The Gophers are in. They will take on the winner of tomorrow night's semifinal game, and the matchup in that one is Wisconsin against uh, Northern Michigan. Well, I, I, I haven't seen Northern Michigan, but I know what happened to the so-called missing puck a year ago. And I'm always worried about Wisconsin because no matter what Wisconsin's doing, we come up against them at football at the end of the year or the basketball at the end of the year. And so I know Badger Bob. He's pretty sneaky. And then if he knocks them off, I'm really worried about Wisconsin. I don't know what Northern Michigan has, although their athletic director told me the other day they're pretty proud of their team. A lot of uh, two-goal scores, or at least the Minnesota Gophers had a couple of them tonight. Aaron Broughton got two goals for Minnesota, and also Jeff Teal. Let's look at Aaron Broughton's goal in the third period. It was a beautiful effort on a deflection out front. It was Aaron Broughton. Watch him. He's number 10. He will get in position to make the play. And for Aaron Broughton, what a season it's been, Paul Gill, for this young man. Well, somewhat playing in the shadow of the great Neil Broughton, his brother, who's the All-American, and he thought Aaron Broughton should have been an All-American also this year, maybe even uh, over himself. Aaron's been super on that tip. And, and playing real tough in there for a little guy in front of that net. So uh, that Rozo connection is pretty good. There it goes. Well, that was goal number seven, and at that point, the issue had been decided a long time ago. Again, the Gophers seven, like a final score against Michigan Tech, Michigan two, and the Gophers are now in the championship round, and uh, the Minnesota tradition, it seems, when those championship round games, when that comes down to right for the championship, they seem to be there, they seem to be ready. Well, uh... I'm always amazed at, at uh, hockey, and I just really started to know it under Herbie Brooks and then under Brad Buto. I, I'm pleased with our young people. If we lose in the finals, it will not be because of effort. And anything can happen in the crazy world of sports, and it certainly applies to hockey. Uh, you know, it could be the fluky thing, but we'll, I just know they'll be hustling come Saturday. 
How about like the atmosphere here in Duluth? They host a tournament like this. Does a, does the Minnesota a University of benefit from something like this? Oh, yes. Very definitely. Uh, the very fact that you're doing this game and the fact that all of a sudden hands across the border, we may be bitter with the Bulldogs and UMD, but right now I had the feeling tonight that UMD fans were pulling for us. Might have something to do with the split in the league coming up next year too because Michigan Tech's in the CCH. They certainly are. And, of course, Minnesota now. They move on to Saturday's championship game. Again, our final score was 7-2 to two here tonight. We're trying in our efforts, trying to get some players on board to see if we can't. Uh, we see there the Michigan Tech band. And, uh, yes, we are going to be uh, fortunate enough. Come on in, guys. Great effort on the part. Paul Giel, thank you thank very you, much Bob. for your time. Kevin Hartzell, Brad Doshin, come on in your gang. Congratulations on just a terrific effort, Brad. Way to go tonight. Kevin, what an effort out there. You guys just right start from finish. I'm tired from walking all the way up the steps. <laughs> it's a long way. We played a heck of a hockey game. I don't think we don't play any better than that. Right. And it felt really good. We thought that Michigan Tech was pretty cheap, and so we really felt good about really putting it to them like that. I shouldn't have to put you all through that. You play a hockey game and have to come up three flights of stairs. Brad Doshin, your feelings on this effort here tonight? Oh, I think it's a super group we got here. It's 20 guys just playing their hearts out. Brad did a good job utilizing all 20 players, and uh, we're not going to sell for anything less than national championship at this point. You knew that Michigan Tech was going to be physical. At least that seemed to be the pregame thoughts that they were going to make a run. They certainly did that, but it would cost them in the power play situation for you guys. Yeah, I think we kept our poise real well out there. They were taking cheap shots at the end, but uh, let it go, and we put the you know score on the board. One of the sweetest victories you ever remember? Definitely, until Saturday. Saturday, do uh, you guys have any preference? you got Wisconsin and Northern Michigan that are going to square up here tomorrow. Well, I shouldn't say it. As far as who's a better hockey team, I don't have any preference, but I'd love to play Northern Michigan after what happened last year. The no-goal incident? Right. Kevin, this hockey team, what was, what was some of the thoughts going into this game? You, <laughs> you guys, uh, the first period domination would certainly speak highly of the ways you guys responded. Well, I don't know if we had any special, you know, way we were going to play Tech. We just thought we had to check well, not give up cheap, you know, goals, not take the bad penalty. And we didn't. When they took the bad penalty, we had to capitalize on a power play, and that's pretty much what happened. Let's recall back first period. Uh, number 19 is in on goal, and he almost puts it in. He made everything. He did everything but put it in the net. Yeah, my heart sort of sunk there because I knew I had him beat, and he just sort of, I don't know, I thought it was going in, and the next thing I looked, it was going wide, and I just, I don't know. It took a couple minutes to get over that, but, you know, the whole team got going, got a couple goals, and we got going again. Congratulations again. We want to get Bob Bergloff in here. Don't go away, Brad. We'll, we'll get you in here some more. Bob Bergloff, assistant captain, the senior. I know that this victory, and it's been long waited to come back and come into this semifinal and play the way you guys played out here tonight. Yeah, it's been, you know, we worked pretty hard for it. We worked all year for it. We had it up on our board to hopefully win the WCHA and uh, NCAA, and we're just getting a chance to fill one of the goals right now. You guys must get sick of hearing about how you're supposed to do these things. You're Minnesota, you're top ranked. Everybody says this is the team everybody's going to beat, so you win. Does it take anything away from that effort, Brett? I don't think so. I think, you know, there's a class organization and uh, these players, you know, we come to play and uh, we're 20 guys from Minnesota and we're, you know, like I said, we're not going to settle for nothing less than that championship Saturday night. Bob, uh, defense at the beginning of the season seemed to be the area everybody started to point at saying, do they have the horses back there? Do they have the blue line core that's going to get them through? You guys uh, have really proven your uh, pay this season. Yeah, I think they uh, was questionable at defense because uh, we got the power forwards up front that can really score everything. And if there's a weakness on a team, I suppose they pointed to us because, uh, you know, everybody was scoring goals on that. And uh, we were getting some goals, goals scored on us early in the year. And But uh, we've tightened that up and taken care of all that. So now you guys are where you want to be. You're going to be in Saturday's championship game. And no preference for you? For what now? Who you want to play? Northern Michigan oh. or Wisconsin? You guys are going to be there. You know all about that. Yeah, uh, it doesn't matter to me. I'll play either team. Uh, it just we're going to play our game, and it doesn't matter who we're playing against. How do you guys uh, savor a victory like this? Now, what do you do tonight? What do you do tomorrow? Do you try to get your thoughts off the big one, Brent? Oh, we'll go get a bite to eat over at the Chinese land there, have a little prime rib, and uh, just a couple beers, be in bed early, and we'll be ready for Saturday night. You guys, thanks for making this trip up. Uh, Bergloff, Brad Doshin, a couple of players that were all the store here tonight. Minnesota 7, Michigan Tech 2. The Gophers are in the championship of the NCAA College Hockey Championship, a game that will be seen here on Channel 5. Broadcast time begins at 7 o'clock. We will be along the uh, between periods to bring you some of the special guests that happen to show up here at Duluth. Tickets are hard to come by, but stay right there. 
because on Saturday night, we will have the championship round. The final game, they will play the winner. Minnesota will between Wisconsin and Northern Michigan. That issue will be decided tomorrow night here in Duluth. We will have live reports for you. KSTP-TV, St. Paul, Minneapolis, Channel 5.